Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> baby. Get yeah, get the hammers out, baby. The hammers are coming out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yours is bigger. Now than that's mine. an intro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's the thumbnail right there, baby. That's how we uh, got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Bashing heads in, baby. Having all fun. Right, having yeah. a blast. That's what it's all about. What's going on? It's your boy Preston, Fat Samurai guy, hanging out in the movie dojo and hanging out in the dojo with me. Your boy is actor. That's right. Filmmaker, writer, director, the human tank. That's right. <laughs> Brian Brooks. Welcome to the show, brother. Hey, Samurai. Thank you so very much for having me on. And I want to start by saying you have the perfect voice for this line of work. I mean, you have an amazing radio voice. It's oh, almost like you were built for interviews. <laughs> <laughs> I do the best I can. I appreciate it. Yeah. That. Well, you're doing pretty good. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, man. But it's you great did. to have you. here. I had to reach out to the legend and uh, contact you and get you on the show, man, because I came across a badass, hilarious fun as all hell movie called wrecker uh -huh. i'm gonna get to wrecker in a little bit man and uh you know i really enjoyed it i loved it actually i was like i was i was enjoying the movie so much brother that i was like trying hard not to laugh out loud <laughs> and wake up my wife because you know she has to sleep. we work at different times of the day uh -huh. Uh -huh. i was like oh man i hope i wasn't laughing too loud i'm gonna wake her up she's gonna smash <laughs> me around you know uh, but, uh, yeah, man, uh, the, the, I, I really enjoyed it, but we're going to get to that in a little bit, but man, let's talk about you, man, a little bit well, of your background and, you thank know, you for the compliments on the film, by the way, like, thank you yes. very, very much. It's, it's so nice to create something that you work on so hard for so many years with uh, only a budget that I can afford. Well, yeah, I could only work on it when I could and yeah. to have somebody watch it and like it, because what you get a lot is if somebody's going to make a comment, it's usually me. I had a comment just the other day that said, this looks like uh, uh, low quality trash. It's just somebody typing something mean. Like, yeah. okay, my response is, how many movies have you made? Exactly. How, how, how much time have you spent writing a script, developing each and every character, taking all the money that you've earned, everything that you have on the bank, and putting it into this endeavor, hoping, and just hoping, that people have a two-hour escape from their lives and they have a good time. And I'll tell you the reason why I decided to become a filmmaker, the whole story behind that, but the whole reason behind making this movie is because I'm getting a little sick of all the trash that's out there that costs $200 million, $220 million. You've got to be kidding me. You spend all yeah. this money. And is there a message behind it? Are you a better person for watching this? Is there any mention that makes you better as a person? Anything whatsoever. And a lot of the instances I'm seeing that the answer is no. I'm yeah. like, okay, what if I tried my hand at this? Mm -hmm. And I did. It took me a long time. It took me nine years to make the film. Wow, nine years. Yeah, I know that's it's, it's I, I didn't know if I should tell that to the public or not. It's a little embarrassing. But when you're just a guy, I'm not a big studio. I'm pretending right. I'm a big studio. I'm just a right. guy. I told my friends, I have a friend that owns a restaurant. Hey, hey, Nick, can can I film at your place? He's like, Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so I went down, I filmed the Catelli's. Okay, cool. We got two scenes out of that. I asked uh, the Brook Trails Lodge, hey, can I film there? Can I, I'm gonna, I, I want to have a, a strip club. Can I turn your place into a strip club? And the answer was yes. And I yeah. think I'm getting and it for free. I'm not charged anything. And that's the way that I can operate. Then I get my friends yeah. to show up and I get to try my hand at competing right. with the big studios. And so far I'm doing it. Yeah, no, you're doing it, man. And uh you guys that watch this channel, you know, my audience knows me. They know what I like. And uh, it's legit. Wrecker is legit. And I'm I'm so happy that to see more and more filmmakers like you. This is why we support you, brother, because you're you. very yeah. honest. You're very open. And uh, that's what it's all about. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm glad you said, you know, you were that honest to let everybody know it took mm -hmm. nine years. Because when it's a stop and go process, you got to raise some more money for this and keep going. And, right. and right. then you have life like i said like you did everything yourself like it's just one yeah. guy okay and especially no, I, I, I don't want to take away from the, now uh, the guy that taught me how to make movies he was there to help me with lighting he right. helped me with some major decisions i i don't want to say i made the whole movie by myself but for the most part i painted the walls i built the sets there's some big sets i built them by myself with wow. no help I built sets where I, I, I ended up falling through three walls and it ended up, I just couldn't put it in the film. So I had to scrap it. It took me 32 oh. days to make yeah. that set yeah. and I, I couldn't use it. So there, there's what you saw in the movie. There's also a lot you didn't see. 
those are the things you got to cut out. I edited the entire film. I did the coloring. And then I found out I got a quote. In the very beginning, there's a guy that runs out of a building. It's 16 seconds long. There's explosions that happen behind him. I got a quote. My cheapest quote for that one scene was $4,950, basically $5,000. So if I was going to have special effects in this movie, of which there are several explosions of special effects, I'd be looking at, you know, well over 150 grand or so. Right. Right. Based out. So I had to learn after effects, become an expert in after effects, which I am now. I had to learn professional coloring because I couldn't afford it. Right. I did all of the voiceover work myself. Yeah. You know, once you get the movie done, you're like, wait yes. a second, I have to voice over all these characters. So I voiced over other characters other than mine. I even did stunts for people that wouldn't do the stunts, like falling on a on a bench. I did all of the car crashes myself and then had to put a bunch of ice packs on my back the next couple wow. of days. You know, like I got yeah, in. And the movie bunch. shows you do that, too. You can see you driving. Yeah. Once I started doing it, Brandon, who taught me how to make, Brandon uh, Hamilton taught me how okay. to uh, make films. He said, I want to sit next to you. Let me, let me, <laughs> how was it when you hit the cars? I'm like, I'm only going about 20 miles yeah. an hour, maybe 25. And I, if I learned, if you, if you, if you lean off the gas or hit the brake, right? If you pussy out, basically, right before you hit it, then it hurts and it jolts you. Okay. But if you hit the gas, you push the car more and it jolts your body less. So I just leaned into it and hit the car. And then Brandon said, let me sit in the passenger seat with a safety belt on and let me get some shots. So you see me turning around, looking back, I back into one car, turn around again, hit the other car. He's in the yeah. car with me. So we got those great shots that I was able to use. Lost the camera doing it because I well, let's let's put a camera in one of the cars and then I ran the car. Well, that camera doesn't work anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Live and learn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Overall, it was a blast. Dude. Fascinating. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and I had another uh, a director I had on here, and he did uh, kind of like a kaiju, a tokusatsu uh, monster flick called Crabs. <laughs> Eventually, you have giant crabs fighting each other. Well, wait, crabs. wait. Crabs. That was Mendocino. <laughs> that was Mendocino. Yeah. That's you know, you know him. California. Yeah. Crabs came out last year, and it was in the Mendocino. It was a, a low budget, right? Yeah. 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 But yeah, I, I never saw it, but yeah, it's fun. But, so that, that's my, 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 but that's my same County. That guy was North of me. I heard wow, that. He look at that. that. It's a small yeah. world. Check that yeah, out. Small world. Yeah. Crazy. I, I actually a, know that guy. How was the movie? Was it good? Yeah, it's fun. It's yeah. fun. I had a blast with it. Yeah. It was fun interviewing him on the show and, but he was very similar story to yours. Like it took like, I think almost 10 years. For oh, him to yeah. do crap. It's very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you've got a studio and you've got funding and somebody right. says, hey, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, and they yeah. give you all the money, well, then you hire all the people. You don't build the sets yourself. You don't do the editing yourself. You don't do the coloring. Other people do it all at the same time. So right. uh, the, the cool thing is, is now that I know all these things, I know um, now I can even do my own probably audio at, at this point. Right, um, right. The next film from writing to finished product will probably be a year. Okay. Um, yeah, so my, my next one will be a horror film based in a winery, in, in the cellars of a winery. Ooh, yes. uh, and so I, you know, I'm just waiting to get started on that. I need a little bit okay. more push and a little bit more money. Uh, later yeah. on this year, I'm going to start that project. Copy that. So your your film schooling was Wrecker. <laughs> like yes. you just learning yeah. as you go and getting better and better and you knowing That's, what to do and what not to do. And It's kind of what I hear of, yeah, a lot of people do in life. You, you kind of yeah. start out and you don't really know what you're doing. You know, we, yeah, we watched, uh, my wife and I watched a, a documentary about Spielberg and how he started like, okay, so you made Duel and then you made, you just, if, if you're familiar with Duel. Oh, I uh, love Duel, yeah. Duel, I remember that used to come on TV like once a month and I would watch it. Like, it's a yeah. great movie about, you never really find out why the big truck is chasing the little car, but he just does yeah. it. Yeah. So Spielberg just transferred that over to Big Shark Little Boat. Yeah. It's this it's technically it's the same movie just with you know the much greater depth of character. And but when Spielberg talked about it, he goes, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, and all of a sudden I had a budget. I'm like, okay, uh, you go over there and you do this, and okay, well, the mechanical shark just sank in the water. What do we do? <laughs> Improvise, you know, right. like really Spielberg didn't know what he was doing. So it's it I should when I feel like I don't know what's going on. What I used to do during the filming of Wrecker is I just acted like I knew what was going on. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Copy that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Copy that. We got some people watching right now. Uh, shout out yeah. to Red Eclipse Films. He, he is back being a certified channel, badass YouTube channel member. Good to see you back, brother. We got right the entertainment headquarters. Hello, Fat Samurai Guy. And special guest, 
Brian Brooks. There you go. Yeah, he's saying hello there. Yeah, good to see hello, you. He, correct, he corrected himself for the spelling there on the next one. It's it's a Y, if that matters. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's been happening my whole life. Brian B R Y. Everybody says I because there, there's yeah. conditions to spell it that yeah. way. But that's okay. Yeah. Oh, we have here uh, Car Star saying Wrecker is a hell of a ride. Look at that. Hey, Yokums. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Nice. <laughs> it, it is. It is definitely a hell of a ride, man. And uh, before you. You. before uh, you got you know the the filmmaking bug and got into record I was looking up uh, your stuff on IMDb here and you you were involved with some uh, some camera work and uh, electrical equipment first yeah the, fir the first step was to set step behind and 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 see how the process works and see how the director worked with uh, the actors on very very low budget films which is really how you, you get the nitty gritty on and I remember uh, at one point what was it novelty or something I said to the director, like, hey, it, it helps if you turn the sound, the microphone on. Having <laughs> <laughs> so, really, some trouble with the audio, where well, you got to hit the on button. <laughs> when, you, when you're making, when you're in charge of so much stuff, it's yeah. really easy to forget stuff. I remember on, uh, there, there's, a, there's a scene when I'm arguing with the detective over using bullets and guns before we go into this big den and, and, and fight all these guys. I'm like, ah, I gave myself the Indiana Jones, I don't like snakes thing. Well, I don't like guns. Yeah, and there's yeah. a story behind that just in case there's a sequel, which there should be. And so, yeah. you know, so we're, we're, when you're calling the people out and you're like, I've got to get two, two, three fog machines ready because there's always a fog machine. It's always crap out, setting the orange light, setting the blue light, getting the people there, the audio. Then I had to cut a hole in the Pelican case to get that shot upwards of us. Thinking about doing all this stuff, even though I wrote the script, I forgot to practice my lines. Oh. So we go to film. There's 15 people standing around, and I can't remember what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> so there's things like that kind of happen. And, you know, like, like I bring yeah. that up because the other guy forgot to turn on the microphone. Oh, yeah. I've, I've forgotten to do such a basic thing as to memorize my damn lines before yeah. I go into my own production. And so the other actor was hinting, hey, you're supposed to say this. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> give, me, give me a sec to review, guys. We ended up pulling it off. And a lot of people say that's their favorite scene, though. So that, that nice. one worked out. Did you do a little ad libbing in that scene there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those, <laughs> mostly instead of saying the lines that I had written down sometimes, and I learned this from Clint Eastwood, he would say, you can use your face and your expressions to say the lines. Still don't tell is, is, is the deal. So instead of saying that I'm annoyed with what he's doing, I tried to just show it on my face. I knew we had three cameras, one wide, one on him, and one real close up on me. I'm like, all right, that's the one I'm going to use with myself. So I'm just going to show that I'm annoyed look over at him, tilt my head like that. And it worked. It worked yeah. better than actually uh, re reverting back to a bunch of dialogue. Hey, I'm annoyed. Hey, I'm annoyed. No, 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 no. What, what would Clint Eastwood do? He would just use that Clint Eastwood look. Right. And I, I love the fact that he's still around and still kicking, by the way. Oh, I wish yeah. I could meet him. You know, he's like yeah. 93 now or something. Like, what an impact that man has had on the world. Oh, I know. Outlaw Josie Wales, baby. Oh, oh God. God. Let's for, go. for, for me, it was the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like that's one of it's one of my top ten, if not top five movies. I love that man. I love what he did. But it, in, in that movie, you get all three characters are so well shelled out. They're so well like they spend a lot of time letting you know the characters. So you really get into it, and then they all face off at the end, and you see that influence on on the greats that are alive now. Like Tarantino's done yeah. that twice now, where he's yeah. got. A gun here and a gun here and a gun here. Well, you know he's paying homage to the greats. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The the triple on that triple one. Yeah. threat showdown, yeah. the classic, and that score by yeah. Ennio. Oh, oh and the score, so beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's so yeah. good. And I think there's a documentary uh, for Sergio Leone on Netflix right now. I think uh, there's a documentary that just came out. I got to watch that. Yeah, For sure. Because I hope so. Because yeah. I tell you what, with, with all there's a lot of junk that's out right now, you might as well watch a good documentary where you learn something. And since I am the studying in, in the studying of, of stories and how to tell yeah. stories and how to impact your life, like, okay, well, let me learn what did these people like Spielberg? What did they do? George Lucas, you know, like he, he this beautiful, wonderful, maybe the greatest trilogy of all time with Star Wars. And now look at it. You know, you, you put it in the wrong hands, and now it's like, well, now everybody's making fun of Star Wars. And is it is the acolyte going to bring it back? It doesn't sound like it. 
Yeah. You know, so it, it's, it's, you know, how, when you craft a story like that with good and evil and you learn lessons along the way and character yeah. development, boy, that's what I wanted to get into. Why make a trash movie when you can make a good old fashioned 80 style movie and yeah. pepper in little messages that are good little messages in here. When I am um, speaking about God or speaking about life, there's a reason I'm, I wrote that stuff in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's a blood and guts and there's gore and there's the action and stuff. And there's also stuff that makes you think if you choose to think about it, a lot yeah. of people don't pay attention when people are talking, they don't pay attention. Okay. Get to the action. So right. I satisfy those people as well. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And this is, and going back to uh, Disney era, star Wars, this is my reaction mm -hmm. to uh, Disney star Wars right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is me. I'm just, I'm done. I'm just so checked out. I just, I don't care anymore. I just, that's it. I, I got I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I don't care anymore. I, I don't care anymore. Maybe Deadpool yeah. can resurrect him, you know, and it probably will. But um, yeah. boy, when, when you take the source material and you piss on it, you make people angry. Exactly. And, you know, I, I, I've listened to, I, I don't know if you listen to Neurotic, um, uh, he he gives you an update every couple of days as to what's going on. And he's a very intelligent guy. And yeah. and he he has this inside ear on it. And he's like, hey man, things don't seem to be getting any better. What's up next? Madam Webb, could it possibly be worse than the Marvels? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Like, you yeah. know, like, like it yeah. used to be easy, you know, a lightsaber, good, bad, you, you know, and, and now it's it's uh some messaging that I don't particularly agree with. And yeah. Boy, when you're cramming stuff like that down people's throats, then it's not entertainment yeah. anymore. It's more like a, a rally that you don't want to be at. Yeah. You, we go to the movies to escape. You That's know? the whole deal. That's it's the whole point. Yeah. yeah. And you can From escape with yeah. Wrecker, baby. That's right. You oh, know. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Brian Arnold is the best. That's what he's calling you now, Brian Arnold. Well, Brian Arnold. <laughs> so Brian, Brian Arnold is uh, one of the two guys. There's uh, the, the, the uh, Willis... Uh, Oh, what's it called? The, the, the Will Shakespeare Club here. And that's Brian and Billy. They're two best friends that live here in my little town. Oh, North okay. Nice. nice. And nice. and so the two guys that have the microphones that are the knives. Yeah. And Arnold's uh, the, the bigger of the two. Okay. All right. So th those two are best friends. And I told you, I, I originally wrote that uh, for a different guy named Zach Darling. And, and he was going to be uh, more like a circus entertainer. And he it, all the lines were his. But then... Those guys said, hey, can we have a part in your movie? And I was like, well, maybe I could give that part to Brian and Billy. So I divvied up the lines and I said, why don't you guys take the lines and beat them back and forth like a Beastie Boys song? Right. And they did it. Yeah. And I hadn't actually heard, I hadn't heard it until the day we filmed. And they came in, they screwed up very few times. They did a great job. And they had their blocking down and everything. It's, it's kind of nice to sit back with a couple guys that aren't just friends, but that are actors and take it seriously. And they show up with their lines memorized and That's they right. get it right the first yeah. time. Like, oh, oh, this is great. We don't have to do 17 takes, you know. And I thought that was really entertaining to have a couple yeah. of guys that just and they're friends and they can see their friends. And and I had a good time stabbing Billy in the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you were, see the foreshadowing, were oh, there, there's knives on the microphone. Gee, what's yeah. going to happen? But yeah. that was half the fun of making the movie is don't take it too seriously. No, a lot no. of a lot of friends when they saw it at the premiere, they said, "I'm surprised it was so damn funny." I'm like, yeah. well, if you know me, I wrote it. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the that's one of the things uh, the main things I love about it. Because as soon as I started watching, I'm like, okay, let's see what let's see let's, let's let's see where this goes. And the way you turn your head to like talk to people, <laughs> like, like the, that that little that little turn, I can't do it. I can't do it like you. And the way the way you talk, you know, <laughs> the voice you make. So that's I need my, with no uh, guns, no guns, just my tools. My most, my most famous, if you want to call him a fan, uh, oh, <clears throat> I, I had a friend that that uh, works for Robert Downey Jr. And he said, hey, I'm going up to the RDJ's lot. I was the RDJ. What, what's that? Robert Downey Jr. I'm like, he's one of your clients? I'm like, yeah. Hey, could you tell him I made the movie? <laughs> and he said, yeah. And he gets back to me a week later. He goes, well, Robert Downey Jr. actually watched your film. I'm like, oh, God, I'm honored. Uh, what did he say? Well, nothing too terribly good. He's, <laughs> he said, he, I guess he said he almost, uh, he almost stopped watching it because he didn't like my voice. Now, I am obviously making fun of Christian Bale's Batman. 
yeah. obviously. Like that should be, yeah. you know, obviously I'm, I'm yeah. talking like that. Like that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm doing it because I thought it would be funny. Right. Uh, but he said, uh, it, once you get past that, uh, Robert Downey Jr. said that he liked the story of the film and he watched it all the way through. And what a compliment that is. Wow. From, you know, Look maybe one of the top 10 most famous people in the world watched my little film. What, what, a, what a great honor that is. That, check that out. Yeah, he, maybe. He didn't hit stop or quit. He, he yeah. watched it to the end. That well, you think somebody him. like that, like he yeah. gets 67 offers a day. Hey, read this script. Hey, help me out. Help me out from all these people. And, you know, my little, hey, ask a friend, hey, would, would you give him the link or something? Well, and he did, and, and he watched it. What a nice guy Robert Danny Jr. is. And my wife, her favorite movie is, she's sitting right here watching. You're on. The uh, Charlie Chaplin movie. Um, yeah, Chaplin. Yeah, Chaplin. Yeah. Chaplin. So yeah, I, I actually hadn't seen it until I met her, and you know, we yeah, we said, "What's what are your favorite movies?" And I was like, "Terminator, Highlander. There, there. It's hard to you know, Terminator, Highlander, and probably Good, the Bad, the Ugly are my top three. And she yeah. said, "Chaplin, just one, just Chaplin. I love this movie, Chaplin." I'm like, you know what? I've never seen that. So we sat and watched it. Oh wow! Yeah, you can see like yeah, that this actor is destined to go on to do things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a classic movie. So yeah, good. yeah, it's very, it's very. The same, it's the same thing. I never saw it. My wife showed it to me. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have the same background on that. It yeah, just it, it, it wasn't an action movie, so I didn't see it when it came out, and I was probably nineteen or so when it came out. So but good. to show the good and the bad side of a character mm -hmm. really allows you to understand the person. Yeah. And I, instead of all glorified, he's so great, he's so great. Hey, he's human being. And Chaplin made mistakes too. I really like, excuse me, that aspect of the film. Oh yeah. Yeah. And his acting was, was amazing. Yeah. Else. So yeah. good. So mm -hmm. good. Yeah. yeah, so good. We got uh, Mazar here. It says, that's some real wrecking for you. <laughs> not that actor, Brian. There you go. Say hello there. Yeah. We got Toma here. Thanks for your hard work, Brian. Wrecker kicks some serious butt. Look at that. Yeah, thank you. Right on. <laughs> oh, I agree. I agree. Andor was amazing. That was the only thing Star Wars that I enjoyed recently. <clears throat> Yeah. Did you like it? I I gotta say I didn't like it. <laughs> did you did you go all the, did you finish all the way to the end? I watched the first episode and I I I, I didn't watch the rest. Yeah, that's that was yeah. a lot of people. That was eighty percent of the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. So, so like with my film, my yeah. deal is I'll give a movie five minutes, and if you don't catch me in five minutes, I move yeah. on to something else. I don't yeah. give it half an hour, and right. so and or I gave one episode, yeah. and I didn't make I just like I didn't really care about yeah. the next i'm like okay here's some new characters and blah 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 it's a little boring oh wait i've heard this before wait till the second season of well, i don't want to watch a whole season yeah. to get interested in the second season yeah. you know like although that did work with game of thrones game of thrones the it was it's an immaculate set i didn't watch it until years after the last episode was seven or eight was filmed the uh -huh. last season and then I sat down. I was like, it, I know this is going to be like Breaking Bad, where I'm going to watch the first episode. And then two weeks of my life are gone because it's so good. I've got to watch the whole thing. Yeah. Sure enough, Game of Thrones, although it's a, it, it's a little slow in the first episode. Right. But then by the second, well, then you're in and you're screwed. And you know, well, I got I heard about the Red Wedding. And actually, the first that the, my wife said, you've got to watch this show. And she showed me. Oh, oh, I forgot the actor's name. It was the Mountain versus uh, O'Baron, uh, Pe Pedro Pascal. Uh, and she just showed me that fight. Viper, where you yeah. Yeah, yeah. think that he's going to win. Yeah. But that's what that show does. Right about the great. time you really start liking somebody, they smash his head in. And I was yeah. like, okay, I've got to watch the show now. Yeah, yeah, there's there's some really good things out. I like the House of the Dragons was real good waiting for that second season. I heard good things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of get, I'll be yeah. honest, I kind of gave up on Game of Thrones the last season. Kind of the well, ending, a lot of, a lot of people off. did, but you have to remember off. that's what they do. Though, yeah. so is yeah. the Targaryens and again, and Jon Snow, are they going to get together? Boy, it seemed like, oh no, he stabbed her. Oh, you know, spoilers, by the way. <laughs> and then they send Jon Snow back to the ice wall, like the White Watch yeah. again. I'm like, wait, wait, or the Night Watch. Wait, what? You know, but that's what that show does. And if you, yeah. if you accept that, then it was actually kind of cool. They just kind of said, you know, it wasn't the ending that you wanted. It was the ending that you got. Yeah. And, and boy, a lot of people were mad. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was mad. But but um <laughs> I, 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 I totally get, you know, Andor slow burn. I totally get it while you check yeah. it out. But it you, it rewards the audience for its patience by the end. So okay, well maybe I'll yeah. give it a shot then. If if you say so, I'll give it if a shot. If you're bored, <laughs> if you're bored yeah, you got nothing else to watch. Oh, we got <laughs> Amelia says, Love this movie. You got hey Amelia. And happy birthday to her. 
supporters here, man. For yeah. the record, that's, well, that's what's up. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. How you said it was her birthday? Is that what you said? Uh, Amelia, we just celebrated her birthday here last week. Oh, happy birthday, Amelia. She's, uh, she's 27 again. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so she looks fantastic. A lot better Absolutely. than me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I look, I'm looking like I'm 80 years old. Our you know, when I grew, out, here, I grew out a beard like three years ago, I, I I used to wear a goatee like yourself, and I grew it out, but it's all gray like yours now. I'm like, well, well, do I do it? Do I rock the gray? I, the gray hasn't snuck up here yet. If I get a high and tight haircut, you can't see yeah. it, but it, it'll eventually make its way up here. I could see, uh, for record two, you start the movie with facial hair. Because some, I, 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 some time has passed. And yeah. then you shave it, you know, when you... I, I, I was. Uh, I've, I've written a uh, record, too, and I start out uh, incarcerated, but on purpose, oh, okay. because the detective has incarcerated me on purpose so that I can find out information about an inmate. And I start out with a beard, and that was one of the reasons I was like, boy, the beard really makes me look... You look a little older when I shave, I look a little younger. Now, I'm 51 yeah. years old, so I'm not, yeah. not a young buck anymore. Right, right. But. Well, <laughs> when I fully shaved, I don't look younger. I look like a totally different person. <laughs> i actually i actually scared my wife i picked her really? up from work, yeah, yeah i picked her up from work one day and didn't tell her i went completely shaven well you and can't tell I, her. That's, that's I, 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 I pulled up and she got in the car and turned this way and she was like nah she's like, <laughs> she's like who are you who are you what did and you do with testing and then we were goofing around we were like role playing she's like hey i can I feel like I'm cheating on my husband with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> kind of exciting. <laughs> oh my god! It's, it's fun. It's fun. Anyway, yeah. uh, look at this poster, baby. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's a poster, and I, you know, I just talked about this uh, several filmmakers recently that posters, even posters today, are so vanilla and generic, man. They're I just profile agree. pics of the actors. With yeah. bland background title, that's it. If you have a, a name actor, which is if you got money, that's what you do because that sells your film. Like, take a right. look at the posters for Angelina Jolie's Salt. It says S A L T. It's a picture of Angelina's face. Right. That's it because that's what sells the movie. What's it about? Who cares? She's in it. Right. Tom right. Cruise, Vanilla Sky is another poster. It's yellow in the background. It's just yeah. him. Like that, you know, but when you have Mission Impossible, you know, 17, whatever the last one was, then you have all the action, but it's still the main guy. Like, actually, I do like that poster. I like Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, the the Jedi, all those posts. That's a yeah. poster. That's about, you know, they're almost like stuff. paintings in a way. Some, some yeah, yeah, they're, they're beautiful paintings and they yeah. show like you can look at it and say, okay, there's Job of the Hut, there's Han Solo. Yeah. You can see everything mm -hmm. that's in there. And then Luke Skywalker with this, you know, no, it was Han Solo aiming right at the screen like that. Yeah. Those are good posters. Yeah. And I agree. Posters seem to have gotten a little lackluster in, in recent years. I don't know why. Because yeah. when you don't know me, so I don't have the budget to have a grandiose opening and, and uh, hey, come watch this movie. Yeah. Uh, it's word of mouth. So I designed uh, that poster basically. And, and the, a guy in France named Arnaud Dreau, who did the score, he actually did that. He goes, hey, let me take your idea and make it look a little better. And so he designed that and made it. And uh, I had, uh, I think, orange and green. And he changed it to the kind of maroon and blue. And I like I like what he did there. Yeah. And, and so it kind of says everything. If you look in the background, can you see the bad guy, Gothard, with his yeah. eye behind yeah. me? And, it, and, and right underneath the hammer, you see the, the horde of zombies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my only thing is, is, yeah, the girl looking right at the R, Camellia looking right at the R there. But other than that, I mean, I think it's a great poster. I think it works yeah. out just fine. I think it's, yeah. I think it's cool yeah. for sure. And shout out to the cast here, man. Everybody did a great job. <clears throat> Carlos uh, Madrid Mora as David Knight did great. You had uh, yeah. for all you for yeah. all you Monster Squad fans. You had Ryan Lambert, who was hilarious uh -huh. as the minister. Uh -huh. Boy, I got lucky with that one. Ryan Lambert ended up just knowing somebody at the school that, that when I, where I, I went to film school down at the uh, San Francisco school of digital filmmaking, which was <clears throat> in the, uh, the, the, the newspaper down there in San Francisco It's called the Chronicle and it's in the Chronicle building. Yeah. And Ryan Lambert had walked in to ask somebody a question about something. And Brandon Hamilton, who was helping me make the movie looked over, he goes, that's the kid from monster squad. I'm like, how would you know that? Just looking at somebody, he just knew, yeah. you know, he's like 30 years older and we went up and talked to him 
And I said, hey, if I wrote you a part in this film that I'm making, we were filming the, the detective talking to the chief. Yeah. And so, hey, if he, Ryan Lambert walks by just randomly. And I walked up and said, hey, I don't know you, but I'm filming a movie right now. And he hadn't done anything since Kids Incorporated, which had Fergie, by the way. I had to look it up. Like, oh, man, they're, they're, oh that goodness. was a show. He was the head star on Kids Incorporated after Monster Squad. And I didn't realize that. And I looked at it like, there's Fergalicious right there with him singing. She's 12 years old. He's probably yeah. 14 or something. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I said, I, I'm, I'm going to make the. I haven't written it yet, but I was making a part with a minister that's really creepy. Would you consider playing the role if I put you in the credits as and Ryan Lambert? And he said, that sounds really good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I looked out. I, I, I piqued his interest and uh, he's gone on to make, uh, I think he, he's more active in films now. He's made a few things, like a couple of films. Last time I talked to him was a year ago and he yeah. couldn't talk. He was on the set of another film. I'm like, yeah. great. You're, you're doing it again. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to him. He was great in the movie and he was hilarious, yeah. man. Like I was rolling on some of his dialogue. But I love your vigil the vigilante and you start talking about, you know, God, right? Yeah. I love I love how you kept going back to do that later. And yeah. they kept the villains kept cutting you off. And he cuts me off. He's like, I've heard you be, yeah, I've heard your speech before, you know. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, so man. so technically, for reasons I shouldn't mention. Charlie, who's my best friend, Charlie Woods, uh, who played Gothard, uh, wasn't available for, to do the uh, voiceover. So oh, <clears throat> I did his voiceover. So if, if you I noticed, was wondering that, yeah. If you noticed that my voice and his voice are kind of the same, well, technically, <laughs> I'm talking to myself because I'm this is yeah. the first time that I that I'm with him in, in a scene, right. and he, he he wasn't there. I couldn't I couldn't get him. Like I've got I've got to get this done. What if I just did this myself? So I drank a bunch of coffee. I don't know why that I did that, but I drank a bunch of coffee and I yelled and yelled and yelled to make my voice really coarse. And then I tried to talk more like a grovelly because I'm already talking Batman with my right. character. Yeah, it's it's kind of hokey, you know, like like uh, Robert Downey Jr. pointed out. It's a little too yeah. much, but it's supposed to be right. And so I had to make him more grovelly and more evil and more lower voice. So I talked as grovelly as I could. I'm talking to myself. And then I took uh, uh, in in, uh, in in my audio program, I dropped it like an octave and a half. And that's what you get. You get his okay. voice. But, but you can kind of tell it's a little, he's a little too much. And it would have been nice to have had his voice. But maybe, uh, it, maybe yeah, there he is. Maybe for the second one. For that scene. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he, he was great still, though. I mean, he was still good. He, and he, he did and a good job of you can look at it. You can look at it like, in a way, he's kind of like the evil version of you, of you, of your character. Funny thing you should mention that because in real life, he's totally the evil version of me. So, <laughs> I've known Charlie since I was nineteen, and a lot of people described us as you. You two guys get into a bunch of crazy adventures together, but Charlie is the one who says, I'm going to go after this thing regardless of consequences. And I'm the one holding on to his shirt. Like, no, don't go do it, <laughs> but I'll go with you. And so we would just get into terrible amounts of trouble together. Yeah. And uh, we still do. <laughs> and the cool thing about using Charlie is yeah. now imagine uh, 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 Rocky four is a reference that I'll, I like to bring up a great movie. Rocky. Oh, yeah. Classic. Ivan, Drago, Ivan, Ivan Drago versus Rocky. Now, the reason why it's so important that that Rocky wins in the end is because Rocky's so much smaller than because Rocky's big. I mean, Stallone's not a very super tall guy, but he's big. You wouldn't want to yeah. fuck with him in real life. Mm -hmm. But then Ivan Drago, oh my God, you know, like six foot five of Dolph Lundgren, who's a real, you know, European champion. Like he's, he's the real deal. Oh, yeah. So Rocky has to climb the hill and be, you know, the, the bigger opponent. I'm six foot three, about 230. 235 there's not a lot of guys that i know that are bigger than me so like when i i battle this guy who's missing an eye who's got this big weapon that yeah. by the way looks like balls and a penis it was i don't know if you picked up on that my friend and uh <laughs> and so he's about six foot one so i took my shoes off and I found these Kiss Army boots. Remember Kiss Army boots in the 70s, yeah. early 80s? Yeah, yeah. There, it was about six inches of fluff. Yeah. And so I found Kiss Army boots that were size 12. I'm like, my God, they would fit Leo. So he's in these boots to look bigger. I took my shoes off. So just no reason. I've just got no shoes in that scene to make myself smaller because 
if I'm bigger, beaten up on the bad guy, that doesn't make any sense. I've got to be smaller. Yeah. Well, I didn't have to do anything in Charlie's case. Charlie's six foot six. So all Charlie had to do was just stand up. Right. <laughs> so yeah. you said, okay, perfect. You're my Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> yeah. When he showed up and you guys were brawling, I was like, whoa, that guy's huge. Yeah. Oh, so he, he, he threw me through a wall pretty, pretty good. I, I told him like, like, go for it. Like, like just go balls out, throw me to the wall. Man, you, and really did. Took some, you really took some bumps, man. Yeah. Uh, if you, in the scene with the guy with the, with the circular saw, uh, you can see when I, when I get thrown down, right. When that guy throws me down on the ground and I roll over to grab the two wrenches from my case. If you look at my back, I've got all these scars, purple and red, uh, from being thrown down, actually accidentally landing on something, and, and yeah. yeah, that was that scene took two days to film, and <clears throat> you know you can see the, the like my back looks it's all marked up, but then in the next scene it's not like well that's because I got hurt. I just didn't want to yeah. tell anybody. As long as we're on that subject, so Charlie threw me through the wall pretty hard. The wall that I hit is a solid cement wall. <sighs> Later on in the movie, I take the sledgehammer, yeah, and I hit him right in the face. And I knock him back. Now we did we did that shot three times. The first time, now he's got padding and some boxes to land into. The first time he landed perfectly, but it didn't quite look right. So we did it again, and he hits and kind of moved the boxes a little bit. The third time worked out pretty good, except his head went through and his head hit the concrete wall. So when he threw himself back, he sloughed down and his eyes kind of went like that. And I said, okay, cut. And I put my hand out to pick him up and say, hey, yeah. do you want to do it another time? But he was out cold. And I was Ooh. like, oh, boy. And I pulled him to see the blood down the back of his neck. And I was like, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. And, oh, this is bad. And so I picked him up. He's heavy. These six-foot-six guys, they're making them these days. They're really heavy. I picked yeah. him up. And he's knocked out. And I put him yeah. over my shoulder. And I'm carrying him. I've got to get him out of the studio and into the car and get him to the emergency room as fast as I can. And somebody yelled, as I'm going through the doorway, it's about that big, somebody yelled something at me like, hey, make sure to do such and such. And I turned around and his head hit the side of the door <laughs> and, and woke him up. And he says, wow. What are, you, what are you doing? I'm, like, I'm taking you to the emergency Sorry, I hit you in the head. I'm taking you to the emergency room. And he goes, great. You call my wife. <laughs> so in, now, if you remember in the movie, he had big black eyes. They're called sclera lenses. So it yeah. blacks out your entire eye. Well, I forgot to take him out. Didn't even think of it. And so the ER doctors are looking at him like, your eyes are really dilated. <laughs> no, this it's a hold on it's a contact <laughs> to take it out anyway he got about 10 uh staples in the back Ooh. of his head and uh we ended up using that scene and you know he's I'm got he's got he's got yeah. some brag he's got some bragging rights now. He, he's got bra he, he's he's a tough guy he's a tough son of a gun and so yeah, yeah he, that didn't stop him he came back and filmed more well you know chicks dig scars you know, you know i i need some more <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I've, I've got the most beautiful girl here. Would you, would you come and yes, say that? Yes, let us see the queen. Yeah. Yes. yes. <clears throat> there she <laughs> is. <laughs> the queen. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Let me, let me blow you up there. Hello there, so we can see you a little bit better. Yeah, thanks, for, thanks for chiming in and uh, joining us for a little bit, giving, giving us some eye candy there. We appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, no, no, I had met her you, right You get tired of looking at this ugly mug, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, get tired of this. But yeah, go ahead. I, I had met her towards the end of, like, I was done filming. I was doing just adding in the special effects, doing the color, an explosion here or there, and, and doing audio, and then the film's done. And I had met her right at the very end. God, I got to get her. I'm going to marry her soon. I got to get her in the movie <laughs> somehow. So in the very end scene that you see that there are three triplets in the bad guy. And there's a whole backstory that will go into a sequel behind that. And there's two monitors. Now, when we filmed it, the monitors and the bad guys right in between, the monitors were just, the cameras are off. And so you've got a face here and here. And there's 12 uh, security cameras here and here focusing on different things. And I had filmed some people working, some people packaging a fake drug, some people imprisoning other people, some people torturing somebody. And I just had some fun putting in all these little things that no one's ever going to see but me, unless you freeze frame and look at it. Well, at the 
very bottom right. I hadn't put that one in yet. I had an idea. What if I put her on the torture rack? I've got a, a, a real actual torture rack that I got from kink.com. For 200 bucks, they were selling it. Like, ooh, do I want a torture rack? So I put her on a torture rack, and I said, here, I'll just be off screen like this. You'll just see my arm with yeah. a whip. And I'll be whipping her in the back. <laughs> but it would look so sexy if you didn't have a whole lot of clothes on her. She's like, well, is anyone going to see this? I'm like, only half a million people. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No, no one's going to see this. Like, Just make sure your kids don't see it. So I got her, got her in her beautiful bra and panties. And yeah, then she's on, she's on the ropes. And I'm whipping her. And it's super cheesy. She's going, ah. Uh, uh. Like, yeah, this is this this great. Right so, if you look real quick, you get to see my wife down at the bottom in a security camera getting whipped. And don't, don't, don't tell her kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all approve scenes like that. So, we give the thumbs up. <laughs> we salute you, sir. We salute well, you. Thank, for you Thank you for that. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, wonderful cinema <clears throat> cinematography uh, in yes. the film for a little bit for everyone here. Uh, and, and speaking of cinematography, <laughs> this was the shot that made me go, whoa, I got to check this out. This shot right here, boom. Oh, <laughs> I, was like, holy, I was like, holy shit, number one, this guy's, he's, he's, he's the fucking Hulk here. <laughs> and then, and then look, I mean, this is what it's all about. This is what genre films are all about. Look at this. You got, you got our hero there. Who looks like he just stepped right out of right out of a graphic novel? Uh -huh. And look at everybody in the background. Look at all the extras with pistols and guns. Look at the graffiti. Look at the lighting. Uh -huh. Just that one shot, dude. I was sold. I was like, I gotta watch this movie. Yeah, so I, I, watch this movie. I built that whole set in there, and then I was spray painting graffiti. And then I ended up. I was in San Francisco when I saw guys spray painting graffiti, and I rolled down the window like, hey. If I bought you guys unlimited beer, would you come up to Santa Rosa in my studio and cover the place? Like, do whatever you want. And the guy's like, what? When? I go, now. <laughs> so I got three guys that I didn't know. Yeah. It only cost me like 36 beers. And they said, okay, we went this color and this color and this color. And I went to the paint store. I'm like, go crazy. And they got drunk. And then they they did a whole layer around the room. The, the room is huge. 16-foot ceilings. Uh, yeah. 1,700 square feet is my studio. And then they did another layer over it. And I was like, hey, this looks great. And they go, no, 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 we're not done. Then another layer over that. It goes on to the left and the right and above that you can't see from that picture. And then the uh, all the bars there on the left side. See, I built all that in the stage. And underneath the stage are 44 tires that I wow. got donated from uh, Adam's Tire here in town. Uh because I thought with with me and Leo, we're both, you know, 222, 30. And then there's other people up there dancing around. If this thing structurally fails, because I built it to fall, because right. it eventually falls, then you just pull the tires out. So I got all the tires, loaded them up all by myself in my truck, I think 12 or, 12 or 15 at a time and brought them down 90 minutes down, unloaded them 90 minutes back up. And then I had to take them all back, 44. And so, so if we fell, we'd only fall about this far. And we would bounce on the top of the tires and then we'd be able to continue filming. So that's what's underneath that thing. One of the, you know, safety first, except right. for, except for Charlie, I can knock him out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, have you always been a pro wrestling fan? Was that a, Oh that God. A, Cause I, I, I actually, you know, yeah, was it yesterday? I've, I've been doing so many interviews. I'm like losing <laughs> track of time. Yeah. I just, re I just recent, Oh, it was um, earlier this week. I inter uh, interviewed uh WWE pro wrestler turn actor filmmaker now Leroy Kincaid yeah so it was fun having him he's just now starting out check out he's just now, okay. check out Ascendance <laughs> is a his that's, film that's uh, movie? his short film he did on YouTube you can watch it for free You'll so enjoy. for me that, that all started with Rocky 3 I yeah. didn't know who Mr. T was. I didn't know who Thunderlips was, who was Hulk Hogan. But when Thunderlips came out, screw yeah. Mr. T. I loved Mr. T. But then I saw him come out. <laughs> That's my favorite part of that fight. So good. And I, so I, you can see elements of that in, in, in what I filmed. Right. If you combine the Hulk Hogan fighting Rocky with Escape from New York, that was also, that was Ox, uh, 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 that big, big six foot eight guy that Kurt Russell fights. As yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like you, you can see the similarities in, in that, that was a 22 by 22 uh, uh, 
platform that was up about three and a half feet, just like I built, and they had fire coming out of the top of the of the poles. So I exchanged that. That's I got that idea from Escape from New York. Nice. Wonderful movie, John Carpenter, 1981. A huge influence on me. So I said, what can I make? What's hotter than the fire coming out? What could I do? What if I put four beautiful strippers on the poles? So I made the poles 50 millimeter. That's what a stripper pole is. And so I designed that to put the yeah. girls up there on it. That's right. So whole nother tangent story. But in that scene where the camera pans down from the roof and then we come right. in and we first see that room and the girls are on the poles, none of those girls were there. None of the people on the right or on the left were there. By that time, people had been there too long. People don't know when you're making a film like, hey, it takes a long time to get the shot right. Right. And right. so I started out with 34 extras around and three of the three of the four girls showed up. I'm like, all right, we'll put the girls here. And they did their thing. And then I turned around and uh, 22 people were gone. We had 12. So I had the green screen in individually. Those girls, that's all green screened in. That's all just no my way. Wow. If you, look, if you look really closely, I am in the audience turned away, dressed up differently, cheering like that. I'm all over the right. I'm all over the left. And I'm the main star coming in the middle of the, of the shot. So sometimes that happens. You turn around when well, my audience is gone. And I did, you know, I, I'm, yeah. I'm chained up with a dog collar. I've got Jennifer and Kelly pulling me, these two twins pulling me with a chain. You know, uh, it, you know, there's other stuff is on my mind. Right. And when somebody says, hey, I'm leaving. Oh, well, that person's my ride. Oh, well, that person's my ride. And all of a sudden, like in, in a couple of minutes, you lost uh, uh, two thirds of your crowd. Like, oh, no, what am I going to do? Well, special effects. That's what. So I, wow. I green screened in the crowd. You'd never notice though, would no, you? No, never yeah. noticed. That was impressive, man. Yeah. Wow. Check that out. Yeah. Well, I know, I, I now know that we're brothers, not just because we have similar tastes yeah. in movies, <laughs> pro wrestling, all that stuff, yeah. but uh, let's represent the Star Wars figures in the background there. That's right. Oh. That's right. That's why we're brothers. Yeah. Yeah. You got Chewie. So, here's my, here's my, my, my 16 inch Chewie. Yeah. Right. Which is a little bit bigger than my Rancor monster. <laughs> <laughs> my I Rancor. love it. Love it. Unfortunately, yeah. now I, I had the entire, I'm, I'm sure if you're a Star Wars fan, you probably had the yeah. same thing. The cards, remember the cards, you got the bubble gum. And if you got all of the cards, you could turn them all upside down and make a, a larger big picture. That was Chewy 3 CPO. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my whole collection ended up getting flooded and watered out. With, there was no. my dad's. And no. you know what else I had? I had Mork and Mindy cards. I didn't oh even God. know. Like, my member mom got me Mork and Mindy cards. Yeah. And I thought, what the hell is this? Because yeah, back then, Robin Williams was brand new. Nobody knew who he was. Yeah. If yeah, I yeah, yeah, those yeah. now, I bet you they'd probably be worth a pretty penny, I would imagine. Probably, uh, yeah, for sure. Because who, who knew where he was going to hey, go? Cheers. Then, cheers. Oh, yeah. I'll drink to that. Cheers to the queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Same taste in movies. So, uh, and got the figures, but as soon as you said Rocky Three, that's my favorite Rocky movie. Is it your I love, favorite? It's, I love all of them. I yeah. love four so much. Yeah. But my personal favorite is the uh, is the third one. But I mean, come on, Thunder Lips, man. You know, Thunder Lips is here yeah. in the flesh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate male versus the ultimate, ultimate meatball. meatball. <laughs> <laughs> all day, man. I can watch the movie every day. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, to, that was a great. To, let's have some fun here. Let's get to okay. uh, watching some actual footage of the movie. Let's show the trailer. Oh, look at this! Jay, he's jumping the gun. He's beating us to the punch. <laughs> Just watch the trailer. This looks awesome. All right, so, yeah. So let's have wonderful. Some fun. Thank you. Yeah, and let's bring up the trailer of Wrecker, and then we'll watch it again and get some more wonderful BTS from both of you. And, okay. Uh, here we go, baby. Wrecker. Let's do it. In a city plagued with crime, a determined cop and a man pushed to the edge uncover a sinister plot and must join forces. Unspeakable evil. You want me to investigate zombies for God's sake? We got a show for you.
Lights out, motherfucker. Yeah. Lights <laughs> out, motherfucker. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Love it, man. You love it. And, uh, you know, ah, you know, when I got done watching it, I was like, see, this is how it should be done. This is what indie films are all about. You know, uh -huh. the, I'm getting the, the, the satisfaction in the entertainment that I'm not getting from a lot of big budget AAA, uh, you know, movies recently. Because they play it safe too much. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, man, there you go. It's so beautiful. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so good, so good. it scratches the itch, baby. Hey, ho. yeah. Yeah. Scratch the itch. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let me look at it one more time, and then uh, yeah, do a little mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Yeah. But be before scratch I leave, I have to say, um, I'm gonna scratch. It my has itch. been amazing to see this guy so committed, so determined, and who invested in this project. And I'm so happy to see the appreciation that the audience are having, and so honored to to be in your show. Thank you very much. I have to leave, but what an honor to be here with you guys. And thank you for support this guy because he's really, really um, a him he's in a every friend. single way, not just as a director, as a human being. Yeah, thank you very much. A, a, a gem. A gem. A gem. <laughs> <laughs> he's a ham, too. He's a also ham. A ham. I'm, I'm a ham. I'm a ham. You know? uh, thank you. For, you got it. You got it. <laughs> thank you for uh, popping in and saying hello to the audience and hanging out with me. Okay, I appreciate sure. it. You're always welcome. Oh, look at You're that. Fine. Look at that. Bad acidity and love. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. This is so much fun. But yeah, let's take a look at the trailer again, man. Yeah, please. Break down here. Okay, you're going to have to stop it right yeah. at the start yeah. here, right? Yeah, yeah. When we see. <clears throat> I can't believe that. This right there, a little bit more. There you go. Oh, All right. How is this green screen? I, I, okay, I never. So, now, if you, okay, right, right where you're at right there with your cursor. So see, that's really hard right there because that's Artemis Astrid. That's my ex-girlfriend who does an aerobic stripper pole. Uh, okay. uh, class. Yeah. If you if to make it look real, like she's really there. See her hair. See how the yellow. Uh, that's a that's a, a that's just a, a caution tie strap from my truck. Okay. <laughs> Three wow. of those. Are but yeah. see, I have to cut. I have to go frame by frame and cut her hair out so it looks like that's before her, and not behind her. And then the other two girls, they're green screened as well. Man, one man. Got, the one on the right, you got that big yellow light, which I didn't have oh, on her green really? screen. So I had to go and add the yellow to all of her flesh tone there to make her look like she's under the light. There's a lot of work here. Down lower on the right over here, see the guy with his hands up, the very right person. Uh, that yeah. one right there, that's Carlos, the detective. In front of him is, I think, me. I think there's left is me as well. Over on the left side, the, is I think it's me and me again, and then another <laughs> kid. So, so the it only works, it works. are the there's it were because you don't see it very quickly. Do you? you come in and then the shot punches forward? I think the whole shot's about twelve seconds, and but you in the trailer you only get about four seconds of it. Right. So right. the people in the ring are really there. the The guys in the middle of the screen with their hands up are really there, and then I'm down there too, really there, in gotcha. the middle. And then I had to add all these other people. If you look to the right, see how they're, you can tell they're not real. If you, if you look, there's no if shadow. You, yeah, if you really, pay, yeah, if you really. I, I did add a shadow to it on the floor, uh, but it was so much work to get this to work yeah. because all these people had taken off. Well, what do you, what do you do? Right. You know, well, I got to do something. So I just, uh, I relied on, on time and effort. Yeah, and it's still it's work, brother. Yeah. Great job. Great job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Now, okay. now this the the cop here played by our boy here, Carlos, <clears throat> Carlos Madrid oh. Mora Mora. Yeah. yeah, shout out to him, again to him. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, brother. The, the character throughout the movie was driving me insane. <laughs> 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 I, knew, I knew I knew I had a I had an inkling that the character arc for him was coming, like it was coming soon. And uh, not to spoil anything, because everybody watching, I want you guys yeah. to watch the movie. <laughs> But it was so satisfying. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Well, I can, I can 
take it a bit farther in that because he kept no, we didn't film everything chronologically, but we okay. did film the finally film the ending in the end of the production. Okay. And he kept saying, Hey, I want to I want to do more. I'm like, Well, you read the script, right? He's like, Yeah, I'm like the, the whole point is <clears throat> subversion of uh, of what the audience expects, right? And so you think that I'm going to take on this whole huge thing. Well, in the end, I do. I take on the big bad guy. Right. But so we keep cluing in this horde. There's this thing. There's this horde. There's this horde. Well, then we find the horde as well. I said, don't worry, Carlos. You're going to fumble through the entire film because you're, you're biting your finger. This is something I do. I bite my fingers. And then when I was loading the gun with blanks, which we ended up using because it's very loud, even with half blanks, it's, sometimes the camera wouldn't pick up the, the flare. And I got good at special effects. Like, we don't actually need to do that. But I couldn't push it in because I was biting my nails so much, subliminally, you know, and I couldn't push yeah. it. It hurts, man. It hurts. That's a great idea. Wait a sec. I'll give that to the other character because how is he going to, he's a gun expert. He's basically uh, your, your, your uh, man with no name. Like everything he shoots, he hits. Yeah. Like, like Clint Eastwood, that's kind of his character. Everything he shoots, he hits, but I got to keep him away from guns for the whole movie until the end. Then you get the satisfying ultimate yeah. gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, and earlier in the movie, you kind of set up a little bit, a hint. Mm-hmm. That when he when he has the the beef with the, the you know the captain he's like you're always at the gun range yeah <laughs> you're always over there so always like, at the gun range and, and what's he there. doing what's he doing when they're talking he's biting his nails he's always uh-huh. biting his nails so we had filmed a version where he had bandages on his fingers and then there was blood on the end so it's a little too unrealistic because okay. who's gonna bite bloody fingers like well let's let's just go back to this you yeah. know and then he he keeps getting his right hand smashed right car, car trunk. The, the pelican case that keeps smashing his hand. There's a reason, because I, I don't want him to have a gun just yet. Yeah. Right. And then there's the very satisfying ending where he gets the ultimate gun. It's like the video game where you're like, wait a yeah. sec, now he's, yeah. oh, he's got that? <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was great. Obviously from uh, The Predator, Jesse Ventura. That's where oh, I got yeah. that idea. Oh, yeah. So I, I had that gun made by a guy named Mr. Minigun online. And I said, yeah. hey, can, I, it, like, can, can you make something like this? And he made it by turning a drill upside down nice. so you fire and then the okay. drill comes out and it goes round and round and round and then i i digitally added all of course all of the flare right. yeah. and all of the bullet shells coming out i added those one by one and there's wow. a thousand there's a lot oh of them, but, but you know i had nine years to make the movie so <laughs> <laughs> predator poster right there baby yeah 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 represent <laughs> gotta represent uh but uh this scene this scene, oh my god, bro! I was dying. All right, so I was like, dying. I bought a, I bought the most powerful BB gun in the world. The idea was to shoot at an angle. The BB gun. Now that's uh, originally that the, the mirror in the background is when I jump out of the way, and there's a guy with an Uzi. Leo Stewart is shooting at me, and so while he's shooting blanks, this is back when we were actually doing blanks. Yeah, making a huge sound by the way, and the cops came like, oh god. So well, we had to shoot it again, and so I turned on an air compressor. So making all that noise. Then we then he shot the Uzi again, and the cops came back, and I said, I think some kids are practicing Chinese New Year fireworks down there. I think that's what it is. And I'm like, all right, yeah. let's stop using the blanks. And I'm just going to fire. Just go ahead and press the trigger. And I'm, excuse me, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm going to add it later digitally, yeah. which is what I did. But I was going to break the mirror with the, uh, with the BB gun, the, the pellet gun. And all it did was shoot pellets and that zinged up here and zinged up there. It was super dangerous. I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to do? So I just came in and I smashed it with a hammer. And then I walked out of the way just while we're filming. Then I went back in, smashed with the hammer, walked out, went back in. And then I edited myself out so that it wow. was like that. I was like, oh, Amazing. it's just a little cheap, cheesy way that I yeah. that I accomplished what I wanted to do. And in the reflection in the mirror, I, I held your attention by putting the the the, the plumage from the, the, the flares from the gun. Right. And then he stands up, ready to go. He finally has a gun. He finally has a gun. Oh, but the fight's over. <laughs> I was dying. I, when you walked in, I was already enjoying the movie, but I think when you walked in, assuming this is a minor spoiler, it's okay. When okay. you walk in, assuming um, that there wasn't that many bad guys in there, yeah, <laughs> and you go in there, and your your face expressions, your reaction, I was like, oh, I am in 
I am I am in even more now with this movie. This is hilarious. So that's and one you, of those things you where I, the tools. <laughs> that was the scene where I, I thought I woke up my wife. She was asleep. <laughs> that was the scene when you were throwing your tools. I was dying, man. Well, yeah, throwing oh. the guns and throwing the tools. So yeah, yeah, yeah. so I just had some fun. Oh scenes God. like that where when I walk in and then I hear the whip sound and I go. And I, yeah, I just, yeah, you're, that's just me. There's nobody else in the studio. I filmed that myself. I set up the lights and I filmed myself over and over. And I filmed serious ones. I filmed comedic ones and I filmed yeah. a super goofy one. And when I looked at it, I'm like, God, I'm going to use the super goofy one because it makes me laugh and it's going to yeah. make everybody else laugh too. Yeah. And I knew oh, the guy with the whip, yeah. incidentally, the guy with the whip, it has the Guinness Book of World Records for catching arrows blindfolded. If you can what? believe that. Yeah. Oh, isn't that crazy? Goodness. Wow. Yeah. Tyler he's, Burke. A, he's a so he, he also, uh, what he does, he lights that whip on fire. And so we were going to do that. And when he whips it, sometimes the fire would go out. I'm like, well, if he lights it on fire and he whips it, cause I'm going to catch it and pull him over for my Indiana Jones temple of doom moment where I wrap it around his neck. And by the way, if you're, if you watch the film and you say, Hey, this guy just copied a bunch of other movies. That's the whole point. It's yeah. I, 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 when I was younger, I watched Tarantino in an interview. It might've been a documentary where he said, there's not one second of one movie that I have created that I didn't flat out copy from something else that I found influential when I was younger. So hearing that guy say that I'm like, okay. And like, even I remember watching, you know, like Raiders of the Lost Ark. What was that? 80, 1980. When I was a kid, you know, and he, and, and the most famous scene is that big round ball chasing after Indiana Jones and he barely makes it out. Well, then I remember watching on TV, my dad's favorite movie was journey to the center of the earth. Old black and white movie where there was a guy that was a professor of history and he wanted, he found, he heard that there was this thing and went down to the center of the earth and whatever. So he took his crew down there. Well, there was a bad guy that was following him and they go down through the caves and the bad guy has this big, he's unlodging something and he's trying to kill the good guy. And he launches this big, huge boulder and the good guy jumps in a hole and the boulder goes over him. Like, wait a sec. This is like 1956 or something. Wouldn't Spielberg and George Lucas, who combined to make Indiana Jones, right? Wouldn't they would have been kids. I'm looking at the inspiration for that scene right now. Now, nobody's going to come out and say it, but blatantly, right. that's exactly, it was my dad's favorite movie when he was a kid. Yeah. yeah. He was the same age as them. That's where they got the idea. I don't feel bad anymore. I'm going to say that the, if you see something that is like something from another movie, I blatantly put it in to remind you that, yes, I am paying homage to these wonderful, beautiful movies that were influences to me and so many other millions of people influenced by these movies. I'm going to put it in my movie to say thank you. Yeah, I no, no, well said. And and um, I, I think even the uh, the amazing stunt underneath the truck. Where, uh, oh, what was that I from? Yeah. That stunt was from an older movie too, as well. Probably, oh, you know, you're right. You're right. Actually, I know what it is. It's from uh, not. I don't, I don't know if it was a serial or what. I don't know. No, it was. I, it was. I saw it. It's. It's the the. It's the name of the train. It's. Uh, it's an old black and white. It's a silent movie, and he goes yeah. underneath the train. Yeah, and then comes out on the other side. It's not Harold Lloyd, but Buster Keaton. Buster, it's a Buster okay. Keaton. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the best borrow from the best. It's okay. The, yeah. Why not? Yeah. yeah why not? But man. <laughs> Jesus Christ, brother, you're just huge. <laughs> I mean, if, there's any, if there's any recasting for Jack Reacher, you have my vote. <laughs> I don't think I can compare with Alan Richardson. Oh, look, look, showing off there a little bit. Yeah. You got the tools on. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, just having a little bit of fun there. That was when my back That's was What's all about? Part. Is it yeah. all that's when your back was killing you? Yeah. So this is when I actually had, this is what's left of the crowd behind me. So I said, everybody come in together. So you look like there's a crowd and there's maybe 12 people or so. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I say, I had 34 and it, it diminished real fast. What's it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. Eight, yeah, about 12. That's the beautiful Yulia Kutopsky, a model behind yeah. Charlie. Yeah. Oh, and, and incidentally, back there, uh, just a little bit back, see the artwork in the background. So the bad guy with the tool, Leo Stewart, who's missing the eye, just like he's missing the eye in, in the ring. He yeah. made that. He's an artist, and he made that's that's carved out of nice. wood with nice. plastic behind it. And then we just put a blue light on the front and the pink light in the back, and all of a sudden, you've got this beautiful backlight. 
Yeah, I was going to mention it earlier. The lighting mm -hmm. throughout this entire movie. The, the, is so the cool. good, man. Thank you, thank you. That that's where Brandon Hamilton really came in. Uh, he he was a teacher at the film school, and he said, right. "Hey, let's combine." You know, I think I was one of his favorite students. Let's combine together and let's let's join our efforts. And he really added. You know, I can supply stuff like the artwork, but he would put the lights up. And like now, it looks like a movie. Now, right. now you get it. You know. Well, shout out to Brandon. Shout out. To yeah, Brandon. yeah. Shout out to. Hopefully, he's watching today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But um, speaking of speaking of you know going back to uh, wonderful cinematography, yes, <laughs> the 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 fight scene in the strip club, man, <laughs> that was busting me up too. But I think uh -huh. it's uh, who played the nightclub madame Ashley. Ashley, uh, yes, yeah. No, uh, she she's changed. She's got married. She's changed names now, and I actually don't okay. know what her last name is. She came up to me when I graduated film school. I made a. A movie that's very similar to this one with uh, some of the same actors. It had car crashes and stuff. And you're not supposed to do that in a student movie. And so there were 10 films that they showed. They're all shorts. Mine was 29 minutes. And mine was the fifth one. And when they showed mine, it, when you just give you an idea, when you graduate film school, usually the movies that everybody's making are two people in a room talking about something stupid. And that's your whole film. And I had uh, machete fights. <laughs> I picked a guy, the, the detective Carlos. I picked him up and threw him through my window in my truck. It's fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, he, I got branded. Like it, we had a bunch of fun, and the audience yeah. was like, "What the hell is this? This isn't a student movie." And so when they showed the credits of mine, everybody stood up and cheered and made a huge, big boom, boom, boom. And so they turned on the lights, and they had a. They ended up having a little recess because everybody went crazy for my film. Ashley had been in another student film trying to get noticed and she walks up to me. She goes, hi, I'm a martial artist and whatever you're doing next, I want to part. And she gave yeah. me her card and then a YouTube video of her doing crazy stuff, jumping up all down. She had like a spear. That, so in one scene, she's got a spear with me and she's yeah. jacking me. Well, I mean, if you saw what she had given me, it's very professional. That girl is very, very good. She's yeah. gone on to be in some uh, uh, some martial arts movies. I'd have to look them up and get them to you oh, later. Nice. But she's, she's gone on to have a bit of success in the martial arts yeah. film world. Um, nice. And the girls, incidentally, I was at Burning Man, and there was a, 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 a this this big car called a Braxis. It's a dragon in the back. It had a, this stripper pole in the back, and there was a girl going up and down the strip the pole. And I was dating a, a, a pole performing, not a stripper, but an aerobic pole performing. She did a fitness class named Artemis. And she said that she, uh, it ended up being the girl that was on the pole at Bernie Mann uh, makes the instructional DVDs that my girlfriend at the time had learned on. I'm like, wait, you're flying Laura. Laura you're flying Laura Martin. That's her nickname, Flying Laura, who just happens to have won the 2012 Best Stripper Pole Performer in America. So like of all the pole performers, she was the best one in the United States. She went on to go uh, to an uh, international competition where she did yeah. not play top three, but my God, she's good. What I noticed about her was she went up and down the pole without using her hands. She wow. used her jaw, her armpit, her thighs, her rib bone, if you can imagine that, by grabbing wow. her leg. She was showing yeah. me later, like, this is what stands me out apart from everybody else. I, I don't use my hands. And I said, my God, wow. I'm making this movie. Would you be a part of it? She said, yeah. And she was a link to Diana Diaz, who's the other girl. She was a Circus Soleil performer at the time that did a, a performance on a pole. So I had these two people. I filmed this in my house. Uh, I set up the poles in my house, and then and then another pole scene uh, at a at a, an actual uh, a dance club down the street. Yeah, yeah. And so these two girls get up, and I didn't really have to do anything. I just sat back and said, "Hey, do what you do." And you know, if you look at what they do, they're very good. Yeah, beautiful, very kind girl. Really nice to work with people like that. And I just met them on a whim. Hey, you want to be in a movie? Yeah, sure. Like, <laughs> that's right. They're professionals. That's right. They're they're at, professionals. Professionals yes. at their craft. Yes, that's right. And we appreciate that. <laughs> but I'm just yeah. You beat me to the punch. Like with with Ashley, as soon as she started moving, uh -huh. I was like, oh, she knows some shit. Yeah, well, like she knows, knows stuff. with the sword and the spear. Uh -huh. I was like, "Whoa, she knows some wushu there." Yeah, like, so oh she very good. And I just kind of met people along the line. Now uh, yeah. another one, Ashley, was Marco, another friend who I didn't even know has his own fighting style. And then I met George King. That's the guy with the machetes. George yeah. King has his own fighting studio here with his own fighting style. 
Uh, and then there's another girl, Lura, who comes out. She has her own fighting style called Crazy Monkey Girl, Crazy Monkey Woman. And like these wow. people, like like the the people that are fighting, like actual fighters in in the movie, could all kick my ass easily. Like they're <laughs> they're very good at what they do. Yeah. <clears throat> and so it was kind of fun to get these people together so they can meet each other and like, hey, I'm you guys are all basically going to beat me up in this film. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, yes. This is going to be fun. Like, yeah, I really want to beat this guy up. I've always wanted to. <laughs> any any uh, any fans of um, any fans? Uh, John Woo films. Do you have yeah, any favorite John Woo films? Yeah, so my favorite John Woo film is not, unfortunately it's not the one Blackjack sucked. <laughs> when I found out Dolph Lundgren was going to be in a John Woo film, I was like, yes, I've always been a Dolph Lundgren fan, yeah. and it just wasn't very good. But um, oh, you're going to have to help me with it, but. My favorite John Woo film. I'm gonna I mean, guess. The, everybody's gonna say Face Off. My favorite was no. It was it was uh, the bad guy was Tequila. Or was it the good guy? And then the Andy jumps out and he saves the baby. It's hard boiled. Hard boiled. Hard boiled. Thank yeah. you. It's been a while since I've seen it. But now that now you're reading subtitles and all that. But my God, wow! Like yeah. like visually is beautiful and the character development in that is wonderful. Um. I mean, I could go as far as to say, uh, you know, Van Damme and, and John Woo got together for Hard Target. Like, love, I love Hard Target. It's yeah. a little cheesy, but I love how when they introduce yeah. Van Damme, he's got the mullet, but it works somehow with him. And the other guys yeah. have the weapons, and yeah. he flips his coat to the side. His weapon is his leg. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and they kind of had that little Western vibe soundtrack. Yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah. 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 So good. Yeah, like, there's so, so many movies we could talk about that have influenced oh, yeah. me. And obviously, you've had the same the same influence on it but so what's your john woo film it's it's hard boiled <laughs> it's hard boiled easy okay okay well good we're, but we're, i love we're, but i love the killer or better tomorrow there's so many killer's yeah. good yeah yeah there's so many yeah there's there's the, the always the key white doves in the background I'm trying yeah. to think of what he's what's yeah. he done recently have yet? you seen not to be confused with the stallone movie it's you know, a little different but um bullet in the head yes that's so good yeah we're gonna be talking about that soon mm -hmm. here on the channel yeah very soon, but yeah, that's another. No, wait, is, is, no, is that the Stallone film with uh, Aquaman? That's Bullet to the Head. Bullet to the Head. No, okay, no, no, yeah, no. people get confused with those titles, but Bullet in yeah. the Head is good, man. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good one. If you haven't seen that one, that's a good I'm one. I'm sure I've seen it. I just can't it, it remind me maybe yeah. briefly what happens. Kind of like, sure. around the Vietnam era. Yeah. And um, actually, I can't think of it now. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll send you a I'll send you a trailer later. We'll talk. Okay, about good, it. thank you. But you're gonna it's intense, man. You're gonna like that one for yeah. sure. But yeah, uh, enjoyed this okay. guy. You got you got to have the captain yelling and, and pissed I'm off. I'm telling you, this guy Dwayne Lawrence came you into audition. He'd never been in a film before. He was a baritone singer in a band, and what a booming voice! You know, beautiful voice. He came in and he had his lines memorized perfectly for never acting before. Came in, belted his lines out, perfect. Every nice. single time, like, hey, can we take another take? He goes, yes, we can. Boom. <laughs> so beautiful voice of his. He has a beautiful presence. The only yeah. thing that he didn't like was one of his lines was, in my many, many years on the force. And I was like, well, what's wrong with that line? He goes, I'm not that old, Brian. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. I get you. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, well, okay. Okay. Here, here's something interesting that your fans might like. Go back to his, Carlos's face. Okay. Now, hold that up, if you could, <laughs> next to a picture of the end of Lethal Weapon. What we did is to pay homage to Lethal Weapon. It's the exact same scars that Mel Gibson has when he rings the wow. doorbell at the very end of Lethal Weapon. And if you look behind on the right side of the chief, there is... Um, uh, uh, a target, you know, the black, uh, it's, it's a black figurine of a man with a target and the yeah. eyes, the eyes and the nose and a smiley face. Remember in Lethal Weapon when he's such a good shot that he, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's hanging up on the wall. So little, little homages to the films that made me who I am today. Are there you in, go. So yeah. Wrecker, Wrecker is not only amazing, hilarious, and badass, <laughs> but it's rewatchable because you're going to find all kinds of. Easter eggs and stuff, man. It's, it's kind of the whole point. Yeah, the Easter eggs. Now, that, yeah, there's a lot of them. Now, we talked about action a little bit, some of your favorite uh, action movies. You already named them off. Horror yeah. movies. Horror movies. Some of your favorite. Favorite horror movies. Would you call Terminator a horror movie? Because it, when, when I saw it, I was so young. It really, Schwarzenegger, I loved him, but he scared the piss out of me. 
You can. You know, yeah. and like, you can, I mean, yeah. Okay, so, so my, my style, probably the biggest influence on me to make this film would be the third Evil Dead Army of Darkness. Sam yeah. Ryan did a beautiful job with that. It's just cheesy enough where you don't take it too seriously, and that's what kind of works. But it also has a bunch of gore. But every yeah. time you get grossed out, you also start laughing again. Exactly. And that's, yeah. I, think, I think it's really important when you make a film, like how many Chinese-dubbed, martial arts films when hi, 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 hi. but the whole damn film is that well it kind of gets boring because action 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 unless it's the raid you know unless like it kind of gets a little boring you got to switch it up you have to have something funny happen you have to have something sad happen you have to mm-hmm. want to pay attention to the characters and actually care for the characters so you need a development of some sort so you need to have the sad parts the happy parts and sam Raimi did a damn good job of it because Evil Dead, the first one off no budget, what a great job. Yeah. It's super gross. It's really scary, but it's a comedy. The second one, even more funny. The third one, flat out comedy. <laughs> and that's what I went for. I went for for this. Like we had a, we had a sold out. 219 people came to the premiere. Some of my friends came in limousines. It was really cool. But to hear, you know, I didn't even really need to watch the movie. I edited the damn thing. I, I've seen it over a thousand times. So I just kind of watched the audience. And to have the jokes work, that was a big thing. You know, when there's a big gross part where the bad guy gets his his arms get ripped off. That was great. Literally. But then I immediately turn around and I go, gross. And I walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody starts laughing. I'm like, it, it's working. It's yeah. Working. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Love it. And uh, yeah. there you go. Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2 poster in the back, too. Evil so. Dead Trilogy. I tell you what, yeah, they, they remade it, and I think it was 2013. Yeah. Uh, Ash, they made Ash a female, uh, which is fine. But um, it, they, they, it, they made it without the comedy, and yeah. it wasn't successful. And now they've the Evil Dead Rise. Oh, oh, my God. Now they're back, and they did it again. It was really scary, but it had some funny parts here. And I'm like, there you go. But boy, Evil Dead Rise, that was the modern version. Boy, it's that was great. And uh, uh, Bruce Campbell was in it, but I didn't see him. His name Wait, was in the credits. My Evil Dead Rise? They snuck him in, Evil Dead Rise, and I didn't huh. see him. He's in every single Sam Raimi movie. Did you know that? All three of the first, the Spider-Man movies, he's got a cameo. He's in he's in, he's and, uh, in Bone Saw yeah. <laughs> in the first Bone one. Bone Saw is ready. Yeah. Bone Saw is ready. Boy, That's it's too bad that guy had a heart attack, but you could tell I it was know. coming. You could tell it was coming the way he acted like you, you just can't do that to your body. Yeah. <laughs> Old Mach. Old Randy Savage. No, yeah. Yeah. But don't forget a uh, cameo in Dark Man. Bruce Campbell had a cameo Bruce in Campbell? Dark Man. Right yeah. at the end, he turned around and showed his face because, you know, Dark Man could do disguises. Wait, in Dark Man in Liam Neeson? The yeah. first one? Right was at he? the end, he turns around and you see Bruce Campbell and then he walks to the crowd. How did I miss that? I, I, he, was a, he was an escape from L.A., which honestly I wish they didn't make. <laughs> this one was so good. But I, I was know, like, well, here's Campbell. It can't be that bad. I know, I know. <laughs> what do you think of the show, The Evil Dead versus uh, uh, Ash versus Evil Dead? I, you know, I, I haven't finished the last season, but I've enjoyed the season up to this up to, the, I, I, up to that point. I like it other than it concentrates too much on the sub characters, the co-stars. It's yeah. a little bit too much on the co-stars and like, come on, everybody's watching this for Ash. Give us Ash. Right. That right. I don't care if he's just him for 60 minutes. That's what I'm there yeah. for. Yeah. And they spend a lot of time with the other characters, which to me, they're just not quite as interesting as he is. I he think, does such a great job. Well, of course. He he's yeah. the reason that you're right. He's the reason yeah. we're watching. I think what's keeping me from rushing to finish the last season is. I heard it kind of doesn't end. It kind of so like they, they leave they leave it open. Yeah, and I'm kind of like oh because we know they're not gonna get, we're not gonna get another season. So I'm like ah. <laughs> but well, my, my, my other film buff friend, which I mentioned his name a few times, Brandon Hamilton. He, I thought I was an encyclopedia of movies, but he grew up working at a blockbuster, so he would oh he, yeah. he just knows everything about every movie. I would list something, and he would tell me the year, the director, who acted into the producer. I'm like oh. I was just going to talk about the movie. You know, everything. <laughs> <laughs> he would start talking about his knowledge of Evil Dead and Sam yeah. Raimi and stuff. Like, oh, God, he'd be a great guy to actually have sitting next to me right now. Yeah. Um, but, so, incidentally, Brandon, who was my teacher, who's 10 years younger than me, he wanted a role. So, I let him write his own part. I originally had a very small part in a dungeon. That was a real dungeon, by the way. Uh, it's a very it's Ooh. a blue scene, and I wake up with Madrid, and we're tight. We're we're chained to the wall. That was a real dungeon with real chains, real cages, and there was a guy that was already there. There we are. 
So the, all, everything is real. This is a real, uh, a real place where they really torture people. That's a great um, shot. That's a great shot. <laughs> Your shot. This that's actually not in the movie. That's me getting into character before we hit the. As I, I wish I actually would have put that in the film. But, <laughs> yeah, there's a big part that says action, and then it's me saying it like, "Okay, I'm ready." Action. <laughs> so I couldn't put that in. <laughs> and so what that is is holding me. It raises me up. And uh, what you do with that is you there's hooks, and the hooks go into your back skin. And they mm. pick you up by your back skin. So I Ooh. was not going to do that. So I'll, I'll just hang on to the thing above the hooks right. and it's going to pull me up. But right. uh, yeah, just interesting story. Uh, sorry, I got off on a wow. tangent there about the dungeon, but um, yeah. no, we're, is, we're here for the behind the scenes. So it's yeah, all yeah. It's all good, man. It's all good. Originally, yeah. Um, we were going to, there was a girl that was going to come in that was going to actually, the girl that uses that a lot is, was going to hook herself to, uh, there's eight hooks. Um, they had it in a movie called The Cell with Jennifer Lopez, where the, the bad guy that was in Silence of the Lambs uh, would do that to himself. He would pull himself up by his back again, but they didn't really do it. So I was going, in the script, what I had written, because I knew I had access to that, is Madrid and I wake up and we look at each other and we're, we're, we realize we're, we're chained in and we start talking to each other and we're asking questions and the questions are being answered and we look around and we can't see who's answering them. And then eventually the camera would pan up and show that there's the girl hanging horizontally hanging by real hooks, really hanging there, Whoa. who's looking down at us, answering our questions. Now, she said she had a limit of doing it of about two minutes. So we would just film that part. She wouldn't be up there for the whole dialogue. But she ended up not showing up. So oh. I ended up opting because I didn't want to. I had to show that thing. I ended up just hanging on to it and then yeah. pulling myself up. And then I right. did the rest of my monologue while I was spinning around. Right. Well, it still worked. It, it, it's yeah. it, it, it still worked, but it would have been cool. That would have been cool. <laughs> it might have been too much for people to see, though, because it, like I say, it's it would be real. So right. maybe maybe if you saw that, you would have been like, eh, maybe I don't want to see stuff like this. But I mean, that's kind of the whole point of making a horror film. You test out what yeah. your comfortable zone is, what's your comfort. Yeah. You know, this is real. <laughs> Can you handle it? Yeah, I, I would have been fine with it. That kind of you stuff. Fine, yeah. That kind of stuff. That's just Tuesday for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, this whole opening was 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 wild, man. But th look at this. This is such a great shot. Look at that shot. My goodness. The so the blue good. shot. Yeah. This shot. Yeah. Just this, I, this shot. I, of Terra. I can't see so it. Oh, good. It might help if I showed <laughs> what I'm looking at here. here we go. That. Oh boy. Okay. Here's a little story behind this. So originally I wanted 12 people, six on one side, six on the other. This is the same room where I fight in the arena uh, with all the spray paint and everything. So now the walls are painted oh, wow. all red. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there, that's a flare. I didn't get that idea from any, any other idea. I just thought I want to make the room red. So I said, Hey, can I get six people here and everybody bring a friend and you're just going to reach your hands in. Uh, I, the scene is paying homage to uh, Beastmaster when yeah. uh, remember, you're, I don't even have to tell you, you know, the part, right? Oh, Everybody yeah, reaches yeah. Out, tries to grab him. Yeah. Oh, that scared the piss out of me when I was a kid. Incidentally, people say that copied Conan that came out a year before Conan. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm filming the scene that's after this when Charlie's above me and I, put my thumb in his eye. So I wanted yeah. to have a really gross part where I yeah. stick my thumb in his eye and crush it like a grape. And then it lands on my face. We were filming yeah. that. And then uh, Tyrone Hutton, my, my, uh, my friend and, and uh, my AD comes up, he goes, Hey, Hey, we got a situation outside. And I was like, well, what, what? And I, I'm down with, you know, blood all over my face. I'm like, well, what's the situation? He goes, there are so many cars. People don't know where to park. And I was like, for what, for this? And he goes, yeah. So I took a break, you know, like I said, I'm covered in blood and all the black stuff from his eye down here. I'm in my tank top and I walked out yeah. and everybody's like, ah, there's all these people in my film studio. I'm like, hey guys, what's going on? And they said, oh, well, well you, you said to bring a friend and then that brought a friend and that brought a friend. <laughs> there was a husband and a wife that brought a child and I think she was like six oh, to be God. a zombie. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get on the line, order six pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use every single one of you. Yeah. Well, yeah, I put yeah. the little girl on a bucket, uh, a five-gallon bucket, so she could reach in. I said, don't grab me because I'm going to be right. going backwards. If you grab me, you might hurt your arm. Right. And so I, I had built that stage like like that with the cage, you know, the, the fencing and all that, just designs, just so you could reach in and grab me. Uh, we did six takes. The, the main 
shot was not that shot. The main shot was actually a, a red camera, really nice red camera that my friend Tyler Burke had. He's got the, the, he, the guy that catches the arrows blindfolded. And it was set up wrong, so I actually couldn't use the shot. But thankfully, Brandon had this shot. Ended up being a great shot. You, you can't weird. quite see what's going on, but you can see that there's 22 arms on one side and another yeah. 22 arms on the other side, which works a lot better than the six and six thought that I had. Yeah. So, and the little girl got to be in it too. That's the yeah. beautiful Deborah Jones right there, the Brian and Billy right there. The <clears throat> yeah. That was actually filmed in my in my garage here. The the pretty girl that's that's holding on to the arm there. She's bitten off her own arm. <clears throat> there they are, right here. Look at them. <laughs> that's the little Shakespeare Company right there. In my little small town, these guys run an acting show. Oh, uh, they, all right. they, they help uh, high school kids learn acting. <clears throat> that's what's up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brian Arnold and Billy Hetherington, two two but, great guys. That that they did that that Beastie Boys, where one finishes the other yeah. sentence and then they go back and forth, and it, yeah. it, it I thought it worked out just great. Yeah, they I were really great. But yeah. the but the the daggers on the mic. It's uh, it's it's, it's you the, know what's gonna happen. The, but the way <laughs> the way you did it was so funny, man. Like the way you did it, you're just standing there. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I telegraphed it out. You got anything else to say? Yeah, give me one of those microphones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Oh, man. Oh, man. But yeah, there we go with some stunts. And that's you, crashing, go, it. That's yeah, you crashing it? That's me crashing my Jaguar. So my Jaguar stopped working. It was going to. Something I don't know if cars like other guys do, but something was wrong with it. It was going to cost more to fix it than it was just to get rid of it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to bash the thing, and then I donated it to the local car lot. There now that's go. my truck. I still have that truck, and the, these awesome people here in town in Willis called Norcrawl made that bumper. If you look real close in front of my headlight, there you'll see a steel bumper that's attached to my frame that sticks out two inches closer to the Jaguar than it does on the bottom. And they designed it. These guys made it for free just to be in the movie. Super nice guys just to, so I wouldn't hurt my truck for one thing, but it's designed to pick the car up and move it. Now the Jaguar is on four high school trays. Remember the trays that you have at lunchtime? Yeah. I, I rolled it onto four trays underneath the trays of each tire. I put vegetable oil down. You can actually see it around there. Um, a bunch of vegetable oil because I wanted to make damn sure I didn't get hurt when I hit this car. Right. I wanted that car to spin off into the Netherlands. Yeah. If you know, because I'm hitting a car sideways and I hit it at 47 miles an hour. So that was the fastest. If you look in, in the car, I've got a dummy um, where uh, my, my actor Tyrone Hutton was. And, and next to me, because I didn't want Carlos next to me in the truck right there, that's also another dummy. So right. I didn't want, you know, I didn't want to hurt anybody. Like, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get hurt. This is a minor car crash here. And I'm right. hitting a car. I'm T-boning a car. There's a good chance that my head's going to go forward. I'm going to get whiplash or something. Right. But that's when I found out, like, hit the gas. Don't hit the brake. At the last second, you, you kind of you kind of do that. Like, no, hit the gas because then you push all the way through. Yeah. And oh, here's man. Marco. Those are real nunchucks that he's yeah. got. Yeah. And the end. Yeah, and the guy with the with the machetes, which you can't see in the scene, that's his George King King Customs. That's his motorcycle shop. He makes custom motorcycles. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. You gotta ask him to make you a predator motorcycle. Oh man, that'd be super cool. But yeah, he makes <laughs> really cool stuff with little lights on the ground and everything. So this was particularly hard. This is the one that I got the quote for five thousand dollars for. So what I found out, I just taught myself how to do it. Okay. So once I had the explosions now, now the Pelican case, there's only one Pelican case in the room. You'll see two of them uh, uh, upper left. You'll see two of them to the right. And before the explosions, there's several more. There's one Pelican case that I found at a thrift shop. And a Pelican case is an old, if you don't know what that is, it's an old military case. It's it's a big a big case that you put in uh, something super valuable in and then, you know, like a, usually rockets for the military or something. You see them yeah. in the, on cargoes for military. Somebody had one, so I got one. And, yeah. and so I, I, I went frame by frame and traced out Carlos Madrid Mora. You look, I traced him out, set him aside, put the explosions in, 
and then came back and then put him again over and then blurred out the edges so it looks like he's in front of the explosions. And I look at it over and over like, God, it still just doesn't work. What's wrong with it? And it, you, to make something realistic, you've got to have the glow hitting the wall, hitting the floor, hitting his back, hitting the door on the left. Oh, it took a long, long time to get this to where it looked passable. Right, it might right, not be right. super passable. One of the comments says, hey, the, these are cheesy special effects. I'm like, hey, man, I'm trying. I'm doing this all by myself. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so once I got that down, I think I think it took me 43 days. I worked on this every day, 43 days. There's a whole bunch of versions of this that didn't work. And this is the one man. that did. So if you can imagine, none of this stuff is there. None of the Pelican cases, none of the explosions. But I'm there. You can't see me. I'm on the left. See the orange, see there's a door that's open right there. Mm -hmm. And there's orange towards the top. You see an orange glow. So when Carlos runs by, I hit him with, with an orange light. So that there's orange on his face. Cause I knew I was going to do this. I just didn't know how at the time. So yeah. I filmed it. So he slow motion and my friend Peter Rippins running back ba backwards with a steady cam filming it. And I'm sitting to the side. I flash an orange light on his body and I hit him with a leaf blower. So his hair and his coat, flash to one side like that nice and as he runs down farther which i don't think i have the, the second one in in this trailer there's a second blowout that happens so i had to run down to another orange light turn the other orange light on and hit it with a leaf blower in the face again we did it over and over and over again i think it was 16 18 takes and yeah. finally got it to where i was like okay now i just have to learn how to put the explosions in <laughs> and the embers and stuff but it yeah. works it yeah. works like I knew I could do it. It, it was just going to come down to time and effort. And yeah. that's where I don't see that, that that's being put into a lot of the Disney productions and stuff. It's like, Hey, let's just crank something out. No, put in the time and the effort and the audience will see it and appreciate it. That's, that's yeah. my motto. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Tyrone says, even if I was in the car, you still would have had a dummy in there. <laughs> So there's Tyrone. So I got to apologize to Tyrone. He took a little bit of offense. Uh, now the, the dummies, I had two dummies. They look pretty realistic, but I was taking a Sharpie and I was coloring one Brown and he goes, Hey, what are you doing? I said, well, you're my AD also played that part. I said, well, you, you're Brown. Your, your skin is Brown. I'm just making the dummy look like you. I can't have a white dummy in there and have, yeah. and have Tyrone. Like if, if anybody looked in the car, it wouldn't look right. He said, Hey, that's prejudice, man. I said, Oh, come on. <laughs> well, shout out to Tyrone. Shout out to Tyrone. He did. He did a great job. Thanks yeah. for watching brother and hanging out with us. We yeah. appreciate that, man. But yeah, let's keep it going here. There we go. Saw blades. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that, that weapon was a fun thing. So the, that weapon there with the saw blades, those are real saw blades. And we, what he would do is he real, real, real yeah. So they spin around. They're they're real. They're big tree blades. Oh my goodness! And so there's two on the right side, one on the left. If you look at it alone, it's supposed to be a dick and two balls. It's just a joke, <laughs> but it's real. Like it's a real. It's heavy. Yeah. And yeah. and you know Leo Stewart there. He's really that's real armor that he's wearing wow. that I got from a LARP store. Uh, I love, so the makeup. Told, I love the makeup. Peter Rippin did a great job. You know, yeah, that for his good. first movie he'd worked on. Yeah, just yeah. a friend of mine. That was he just in, in, in a, a side thing that he did. He did makeup and he did a great job. Now, I've gone and digitally taken the eye out because you could see with a little with the light that's on him. He's got a heavy light on him yeah. so that we could get the contrast of the black. Um, yeah. But then you can see that his eye is actually covered. So I, I digitally took his eye out. So you just see nothing. Wow. Yeah, but so the weapon there, when it was spinning around, he would kind of go towards me with it like this, or I'll use my, he would kind of go towards me like that, and I would just get a little bit closer, and a little bit closer, so the weapon's getting here, and then yeah. here it's a little bit more comfortable, and then I had turned around to say, okay, on the next one, we're going to go live, but he had taken another swing, and so oh. when I turned, it got my shoulder. So Ooh. for the rest of the movie, I mean, it it, it cut me like that, and it was, it was a bleed, I was like, oh. Oh, that's real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Hold on, yeah. that's real. Yeah, just yeah. Another one. If you look closely, when the when the two stripper pole assassins are attacking me, the same thing happened. Flying Laura had done a Van Dam kick, and on the back of her heels are real razors. And she did another one, and another one, and I did the same mistake. I turned around, said, "Okay, on the next one, we're going to go live." And I turned around, and it whipped my face. And so for the rest of that scene, I had a cut here, here, and here that were bleeding. 
And so I had to put ice on it in between scenes, clear the blood off, and then say my line and do what I was going to do, and yeah. then go back and then get the blood off again. Oh. So there's there's a few little mistakes that happen, but overall, oh. I went to the ER twice. Charlie, best friend, went to the ER once. And other than that, nobody but us got hurt. Uh, next time, I think I'm just going to hurt Charlie. I'm going to stay out of the ER myself. <laughs> <it> really. <laughs> Yeah, I, scra I scraped my leg pretty bad in a fight scene, and I, yeah, I could see the bone. I still have a big scar there. On oh, God. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I had to excuse myself. Like, you guys keep filming. <laughs> you know, you, you I got to take care film, of this. Film the stuff without me. I got to go to the ER. I can, I can yeah. see my damn bone bleeding. Yeah, so I went, got stitched up, came back, finished up the day. But, I mean, I mean, look, look at this, man. Like, you know, watching this movie, you know, if you, I mean, everybody watching this stream right now, you know, if you guys are fans of Death Wish 3, oh, you yeah. know, Exterminator 2, I mean, th this is what it's all about, man. Boy, you got me there. Death Wish 3 was the best of the five, I'd say. That's my favorite. First one was too serious, but yeah, that yeah. that that, that blonde Are we guy. brothers or not? I yeah. mean, Jesus. I mean, yeah, we we sound pretty close in in, uh, <laughs> in 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 our in our taste. Our taste is very similar. Yeah, but look at yeah. this: real saw blades, uh -huh. strippers, knives getting thrown at crotches. I mean, come on. <laughs> and then and then the shot, the shot. That's right. The shot. I, I did a bunch. Of, did a bunch of push-ups before that scene. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The shot that made Samurai go, okay, I got to watch it. Oh, here's some more stunt work from you. doing stunts Yeah, right. this is where I lost the camera on that scene. The one inside the car? Yeah, so the one that's filming there, that was a... a Didn't make it. From a friend. I thought it would be interesting to put one inside, and then we yeah. put pillows around it, and then I, I hit I hit pretty hard. I hit that car pretty hard, broke the windows, and then I, you know, we, we said, let's take a look at the footage. We pulled the card out. So I got the shot, but the camera was dead. I'm like, oh, oh, oh sorry, right. sorry. I just killed your it camera. Happens. Yeah. This is my uh, second mm -hmm. favorite shot of the movie. This shot. Well, With you walking you. down here. I mean, I mean, everybody watching this, look at, look at this. Look at the mm -hmm. lighting. Look at everything. Does this guy not look like he literally <laughs> stepped out of a Frank Miller graphic novel? <laughs> like that's what so, I was thinking the whole time, man. Like, this, this was this I, is I, a I graphic knew, novel character coming out of the pages, right? In, okay, in so, real so life. it's a good thing you're picking up on it. So this was modeled after uh, Watchmen, which was my favorite graphic. It's still to this day my favorite graphic novel. The character development on it was just oh, a good. beautiful graphic novel, and I really like the adaptation of the movie that they made. Yeah, but. Frank Miller's drawings when uh, uh, you'll see the figurine, but you can't see the face. And so the way Brandon and I lit this was to have a heavy light up above. And then I crushed the blacks in post so that you, you could see my face, it, it, but in post, I took the face out and I was like, I think I'm going to use that for the poster. And did I? No, 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 I didn't. Like, well, there's another version of the poster. Similar concept that's, though. That's it. Yeah. But it, that ended up being a little bit too black in the face right. though, but you can see the jawline. Um, and the, the thing that didn't come out in this, in this scene is I'm actually pulling the hammer and it didn't, I think we filmed it maybe a little bit too high. We should have gotten back another foot or something to show that, but yeah, but, but that that's shot, why. Oh, yeah. I, when you're, when you're, yeah. when you're pulling the hammer, that shot too. Like, I cause I, know. cause I, I'm, I'm thoroughly so beat good. up in the scene. So yeah. I'm like, you know, almost limping and I pull on the hammer. Yeah. 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 But yeah, a, a lot of fun doing this. Like, yeah, I can't wait to make another one. If I could make a sequel to this one, it'd be wonderful. But I've I've got to wait until uh, money comes in from this one. Yeah, uh, yeah to, sure. to get interested in the second one. Incidentally, my wife, who's kind of a big deal down in Colombia, like she she has a charity, a uh, big charity that she was actually Woman of the Year in Colombia several years ago. Oh. Uh, she meets with all the generals and yeah. uh, officials every year. She brought me down and she meets with the president. And when I first met her, she said it was our second date. She brought me down to Bogota. She goes, would you like to go to the governor's ball? And I'd like to introduce you to the president. And I said, the president of your, of a company? She goes, no, the president of Columbia. And I thought she was full of shit. Like, what? No, she meets with the president of Columbia every single year. So she's got a little bit of clout down there. And she talked to uh, the head of the army general, who I talked to when I was down there last time. I've been there four times now. And uh, we stayed at the army base. And he said... If you want to film a sequel to this movie, you feel free to come on down and we'll help you out and we'll take you out in the helicopters out into the jungle. So if we do film a sequel, there's a real actual chance we'll be out there yeah. in Cali 
Now, in the end of the movie, I based Let's it on yeah. Tully. That's where the war is going on. He said he'll take us actually out there, maybe a couple miles from the war zone. Yeah. Like, my God, how could I possibly pass this up that chance? Who's that? My, it's my wife here. Say hi to Brian. <laughs> hi there. Hello. Hello. <laughs> there you go. It's the, the man right there. Very nice to meet you. Hello. Yeah, Miss Samurai. I'm sorry. Yeah, Miss Samurai. Yeah. Can I get oh, some you. loving live, baby? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it. Nicely done. Yes. Hey, what's it like? What's it like uh, uh, living with a guy who's such a movie buff and such an encyclopedia of knowledge? He's asking what's, what's, it, like? what's, it, what's it like living with a movie buff? Yeah. Who has all this knowledge? Then I'll ask you, what's it like? <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. That was perfect. The best answer. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I'm a, I'm really excited for uh, you know. Hopefully, we get record two up and running, man. Let's I, go. I hope so. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. And uh, yeah, let's. We're almost done here. Let's keep it okay. going here. But yeah, yeah, I love this shot. I love that shot. Thank you. I like that shot too. And yeah. man, just what a beat down. And again, with the comedy. Lights yeah, out. with the comedy. So uh, yeah. if you back, back up to that, back up to that car being uh, destroyed there. So that's that's Aubrey Carsey. So the guy that's in there looking up in the car that's about to be crushed, that guy yeah. is the guy that's actually in the next, in the very next shot. He's the the loader operator. He had that. He gives all the soil to the people around here uh, that are in their gardens and stuff. And I said, hey, can I use that? Can you use that in a movie? And the cars were donated by the local shop, TNT, for free. They towed them out there. It's like, yeah, you can destroy these cars. It's, yeah. a, it's a local car lot. that, Like, when a car is T-boned, the, there's one side that's all busted up and one side that's perfect. So I just put the camera on the perfect side and smashed into it. Yeah, <laughs> so it, yeah. looked like it looked like I'm hitting new cars. I actually hit hit just cars that were, that were scheduled to be scrapped. And so that big thing falls down. So actually he killed himself. See in the shot, you can't see who's operating the oh, loader because it's him. Hilarious. And it's one of my dummies in the back. That's hilarious. So that's brilliant. We had, we had a fun day laugh too over here. Yeah. Me laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, what that's are you cool. doing? Just what are you doing? Out as much as possible. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just killing people. It's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a vigilante. God damn it. What are you doing? <laughs> What do you think I'm doing? It's a yeah. B80s movie. I'm killing people. Yeah. So this was the deal here. We filmed this with Lights Out. We filmed it with Lights Out. Beep. But I love the Lights Out, motherfucker. Boom. Yeah. And walk away. Yeah. The distribution company, which is Indie Rights, they warned me, like, you can't really put that online. Um, but, oh, by the way, L L Linda Nelson and, and Indie Rights, wonderful distribution company down in L.A. That, that took us on right away. And they've had us ever since. They've been great. Uh, but, you know, she's she's got a point. You know, some people wouldn't want to see the film if you swear in the title i thought but it's such a great meme one of my friends said god my wife hates me at night because when i put my kids to sleep i say lights out motherfuckers and i turn <laughs> off the light it's a catchy tune it's yeah, a yeah. it's it's an i'll be back with with a swear yeah. word and it's uh, the way i said it I'm like we filmed it over and over again I'm like god i really love that one i wonder yeah. if it would catch on i was thinking about making a meme of it but it's got a swear word in it so right, i don't know right. if, it, if it would take off or not yeah i just put the little asterisk in there yeah, <laughs> for yeah. the U or whatever it doesn't it doesn't when i put the beat lights out beat and i beep it over it doesn't sound yeah. right it's not it's not as cool yeah. yeah but you know we we love our curse in here plus it just yeah. it, it fits <laughs> it fits the fucking movie yeah it fits so the good. fucking movie exactly so yeah good. so, good. Love, so love there the was lighting one, here too though yeah so this is just me and my ex-girlfriend artemis and she's working the camera she was stayed after when we filmed some other stuff i'm like hey let's film this one scene as long as you're here i did all the animations right there by the way that record um oh, wonderful wonderful yeah so yeah so all when you when you see anything when the words come up like uh yeah. in this that's all i did i did everything everything you're seeing man i did that that lens flare on the k look at that the whole so deal good. so good yeah so good that's what I'm talking about, baby. Yeah, yeah a, lot, a lot of work, a lot of work. But uh, yeah. but overall, uh, to, to show your friends and people, especially people that don't know who you are, there's 1,800 comments, uh, positive comments on YouTube right now, 1,800. And there was, I went through them all. And I'm, I'm seeing the, I only see the negative ones. I went, what's the negative? One guy says, hey, this is crap. And I wrote back to him, well, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Sorry, you didn't like it. Uh, yeah. Maybe you'll like the next one. And then he replies, and then the next day he replies, well, who's this? And I said, I'm the guy with the sledgehammer, Brian Brooks. And he goes, oh, my God. <laughs> and I wrote back to him like, yeah, I'm like, just trying to entertain people. You shouldn't yeah. take it too seriously. Well, yeah. he writes back a couple of days later. He says, I've watched it two more times. 
I absolutely love it. I'm sorry I gave you the bad review. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. When there nobody you knows who you are, it, it pays to have a bunch of good reviews and not a bunch of bad reviews. So, right, right. Uh, yeah, so, so far that's doing good. Right now, yeah. Rotten Tomatoes, it's at 100% with uh, 75 ratings. Um, Holy shit. Really? Yeah. Yeah, which, which is really nice. So people see it, and I think what they do is if once you know that it's made by – Hey, it's just a guy that made this. I'm not a big company. I'm just a guy that got some friends together to make a movie. Then you're like, yo, yo, rate this like El Mariachi. Don't rate it like Desperado. Those are two different films made by the same guy. But Desperado definitely had a budget. I didn't. So I got by with whatever I could, buying pizzas yeah. for people and making favors, whatever I could do. And I got it done. And yeah. so when you know that, then you rate it. You know, like, hey, it's. I just no said this a couple of days ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> I literally just said this a couple of a couple of days ago when I interviewed Leroy. Uh -huh. I said the same thing. I was like, you know, all of these critics out there need to do what I do. And yeah, when yeah. I, like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna review this low budget western and immediately compare it to the good and the bad and the ugly. Yeah, or immediately okay. compare it to Tombstone. That would be idiotic. That's what I'm people gonna, do, though. You know. Yeah. This they're, isn't they're, tight. They're, they're like, idiots. It's supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> they're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, the, you, you, yeah. what you got to say is, how many movies have you made? Exactly. How many scripts did you write? Yeah. All I need to know is that low budget Western, did I get entertainment out of it? Yeah. That's uh -huh. it. That's it. Did, it. did it have a good story? Did it have good characters? Was there something in there I could draw from? Then I rate the movie. Uh -huh. But people are idiots. And they're going to look at this $10,000, well, not yeah. even that, $5,000 Western, mm -hmm. and they're going to try to compare it to Fistful of Dollars. Like, what, what, what well, are you doing? People, people are mean, uh, yeah. unless, like, I caught that one they're guy. Like, I'm yeah. like, hey, how you doing? Once I caught him, he was like, oh, well, let me watch it again. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. to you know. But a lot of times, the only times you get a comment are when somebody – uh, doesn't like what you got, or they only saw half of it and didn't realize, right. like, hey, there's a lot of work that goes into this. The police chief is constantly has a problem with the reputation. He's got the paper. The com the the girl that's the girlfriend of the detective mm -hmm. is constantly talking about a ring. There's yeah, just just in the writing alone to give every character something special, you know, then have that actress go off into it, and then you create the story that you hope entertains people that's it you hope it entertains people to have yeah. somebody say hey this sucks well you didn't pay attention because it took a lot of work to put this together right right mm -hmm. and like like there's nothing wrong with you know everyone everyone's different right uh -huh. the movies are subjective right yeah. but there's nothing wrong with you know giving constructive criticism too like uh -huh. you know, oh i see what they did there i wish they could have did that or oh you know what i i like the ending but i i think it would have been better if they did this Constructive criticism sometimes can help you on your next project. It'd be good if I but, got that, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, yeah. <laughs> but I just talked about this. But I think my favorite comment that I always, that I, <laughs> that I love to hate is, I know fifth graders that can make a better movie than, you know, that, oh, like, I see God. that all the time. High schoolers <laughs> commit. I see that all the time. And it's like, all right. When you, really? when you see stuff like when you see those kind of comments and stuff like that, you can't take those people seriously. Man. No, I, I, I there, unfortunately, there's not a lot of them, but every now and then you'll see yeah. one and it's really, really mean. Oh, like, yeah. okay, well, let's just skip past that one. And then exactly. somebody else said, who's somebody I've never met before in another mm -hmm. country, said, I love how this brings me back to the nostalgia of the 80s and early 90s of the movies I used to like when I was a kid. There you go. That's a real comment. That's yeah. a compliment because you got it. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. saw what the effort was, and you get it. Yeah. Samurai guy got it, baby. Yeah, <laughs> I got it. I got it right away. And again, you know, congratulations on your long journey and finishing the film, getting it out there, and you're getting the positive feedback from everyone. Yeah. Congrats, man! Congrats. Thank you. Thank you, you know? so much. It's yeah. wonderful. It's wonderful to be on the show and be noticed yeah. and to have a little bit of attention. You know, that's, that's all cool. I'm asking for. And it's what I do. It's what I do. Much. Yeah, yeah. 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 This helps spread the word as best as I can, but. You know, you know, all these wonderful, lovely articles, you know. Yeah, so that was uh, that was the, yeah. the World world Newswire. That they featured us down in uh, Bogota. on uh, That's like so several, cool, man. You know? Yeah, and you got uh, we uh, in, uh, Latin America, 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 did it? Yeah. Latin America and uh, 
United, United Kingdom. Kingdom. Yeah, United Kingdom. that's so yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, congrats, brother. Congrats. Yeah, yeah, that brings me back. That's uh, my wife graduated Cambridge over there, so that's, that's you know, it's really nice to have a <clears throat> nice, nice that it's getting noticed in the different countries around the world. There was, I yeah. think, there was as well. Um, but yeah, that was really super duper nice. Yeah, and, and yeah. it's well deserved, yeah. brother. Well deserved. So everybody watching this right now, you know what you need to do. If you like action, baby, mm -hmm. that's right. If you like action, if you like the horror, yeah, <laughs> if you're fans of horror, if you're fans of one on one beatdown fests, <laughs> like, you know, big meaty men slapping meat, <laughs> throwing each other, throwing each other through walls, baby. All right. That's right. You know, speaking that language. Yeah. <laughs> just absolute, a lot of fun. A lot of homages. Uh -huh. uh, you know, this guy gets it. Brian Brooks gets it, baby. So we got to support him on his next pod project for sure. And please, we are praying. We are all praying to the action gods out there that we get a record too, baby. Because look uh -huh. at this shot. Me too. Look at this character. <laughs> look at this. We need to see this character back in action once again. That's right. That's right. And you need to put Samurai Guy in your next movie. Let's go. Would you, would you want a part? Of course I put you in. Yeah, you got to put me in there. You break my neck quick. Or oh, I'll totally of... kill you. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. You'll yes. die a horrible death. Yes. 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 Yeah. I'll throw, well, I'll throw, I'll throw, I'll throw a right hook, and that's it. You duck, break my neck, done. <laughs> Oh, rip it off. There you go. Rip it off. There you go. There you go. Yeah. But, uh, Samurai yeah. Head <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm down. Uh, here we go. We have uh, awesome action. Hey, there's Can't my wait. sister. Oh, it's your sister. Kelly Cohen, yes, a uh, professional Hello. physique competitor. See, the only human being I can stand next to where I look like I'm fat is Kelly. <laughs> Kelly she's, Kelly's, she's got an eight pack. She's a beautiful person, two years older than me, has four kids, and looks like she's 27. She's a professional model, uh, has a, just a wonderful, like her physique is just wow. absolutely amazing. Incidentally, also a cancer survivor just of this last year, wow. cancer and heart attack. The uh, radiation treatment gave her what not a heart attack, but all the symptoms of a heart attack were a valve shut down. And so we just went up to Washington to see my mom and her. And I thought when I saw her, I thought I was going to see my sister just walking all decrepit. No, she was cleaning up the floor. Hey, great to see you guys. I'm like, oh, you're alive. I thought you're dying. I forgot that nothing kills my sister. So yeah, very tough woman. And I was uh, it really behooved me to put her in the next film. Um, because like I say, it's one of the few physiques I can stand next to where I yeah. feel like, well, I got to I got to hit the gym. Like, <laughs> so, so I'll never stand next to you, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm glad she's doing great. And uh, yeah, I am, I am too. Sounds like she's badass. That's Super right. Badass. Yeah, that's right. But she says, can't wait to bring it around again on Halloween. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course. That's a Halloween movie. Love you, bro. X West. Oh, she's proud hey. of me. Well, I'm hey. proud of her, too. Yeah. Now, you know, now, you know, you made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Family's got, like, you, the family's family. like, that's, you've, that's great. you've done yeah. well. You've done well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, this was an absolute uh, blast, brother. And this is your second home, son. That's right. This, Come back this anytime. Yeah, this was this back. was great. Hey, the wife wants me to ask. Sure. The 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 uh, San Diego Comic Con. I've never uh -huh. been to something like that. It would yes. be a reason to head down there and go to it if we could come and see you. What's what's the information about that? When is that? Uh, you know, I haven't even like <laughs> looked up anything yet. I know. It's, <clears throat> I know it's uh, probably most likely late July. So we, we got time. Okay, yeah, we got time. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, let me but, know more about that. I'd love sure. to come see you. Oh, I yeah. would love to meet you in person and, you know, get, get the... I, I went to my first Comic-Con here just three months ago down in Bogota. We went to, what was it called again? The Cena? Yeah. It, it was, it was well, it's it's Bogota. It's the largest Comic-Con in, in South America. Oh, And wow. I'd never been to one. And I walked in and we, we had an agent down there that was giving interviews. And one of the interviews was in there already. And so yeah. they were doing an interview and the guy saw me in the crowd and said, and look who's here. It's Brian Brooks with record. And I walked, it was really cool. And I thought just, just for the sake of just doing something fucking stupid at the end of the interview, I put my head down between his legs and I picked him up, <laughs> I put him on my shoulders and the cameraman I was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. Giving you guys something fun for the edit. And they loved it. 
So then another guy that was giving interviews for another thing came over yeah. and said, hey, can I interview you? Who are you? I'm like, oh, I'm Brian Brooks. Can, can I interview you? Will you pick me up? And I said, of course. <laughs> so that was the last Comic-Con. It was a blast. Oh, it was amazing. something like that with all these comic book fans. Like, oh, my God, this yeah. is like heaven for me. But the big one is San Diego. I've always heard it's about it. It's huge. It's, prepare it's, yeah, it's prepare huge. to walk sideways for a while. Uh, yeah, I would imagine. So there's, crowded. There's, um, there's like a couple hundred thousand people. Is that it's, right? It's, you know, last year they weren't expecting that much, but uh, yeah. it was just as packed. Well, the um, pictures that I saw, like there's people dressed up like the Predator that looked as good as the Predator in the movies. Oh, like, where oh, are you yeah, getting these costumes crazy. from? Like, amazing. Yeah. The cosplayers cool. are, are, uh, are really extremely talented. It's, but it's a that would level. be dope if you walked around as as Wrecker, man. If you had the sledgehammer with you and walked around, that would be dope. I've, I've got I've got all the equipment here. I got <laughs> cosplayers, cosplayers, cosplayers <laughs> as the character. I say do it. Have fun. I mean, it's several days. I wonder if I could get Charlie to come down and wear the eye patch and walk around with the leather that jacket. Would be great. <laughs> I'm telling you, you you would draw attention with you walking around with a sledgehammer. With the blood on my face. You I would draw you would draw attention. People would be like, Who's that? You know, who's like, that? Well, yeah. come up and find out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's I would, awesome. I would look into it, you know, as soon as possible, though, because it's hard to get into those things. Yeah, I would imagine. Well, so, so you need tickets to get in and you need uh, hotels, where so I would imagine. If you're, would, yeah. yeah, if you're planning on staying there. There's some nice you, hotels right next to it. I just you, drive yeah. there because it's like an hour and a half away from me. So I just drive there, go, and come back home. Oh, okay, so so you're in L.A.? Uh, no, I'm in, I'm in Moreno Valley. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I thought, I'm in there. So. In the <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, some it's of the like people, I... close to Riverside. Okay. Close to Riverside. You're San Diego, South. Reno Valley, Riverside, LA. When I was trying to be an actor down there, I was in Rancho Palos Verdes, which is yeah. a kind of a nice place, but a hell of a trip to get into LA where I bartended at the Hard Rock Cafe. Oh, man. And found out that everybody else was trying to be an actor too. And I mean, everybody else, everybody you meet, Hey, I've got a script. Hey, I've got a, this acting role. Like, oh, God, yeah. this is going to be, yeah. So I ended up uh, starting my acting career up in Northern California where I'm at now. Wow. Wow. What well, was hey. competition. Yeah. Well, we're rooting for you, brother. And of course, Thanks. you know, if you're at Comic-Con this year, I would love to meet you in person. Just hit me up. We'll meet somewhere. That and, would be uh, wonderful. Yeah, man, that'd be great, man. Yeah. 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 You bet. Yeah. Yeah. But Hey, this was a blast. An honor to have both of you super fun, yeah, on the channel. I mean it though. Second, yeah. second home, man. Yeah, you know, I've had a lot of I've had a lot of filmmakers on here, and uh, after afterwards, they just come back if they're bored. <laughs> like, <laughs> I need a break from directing. <laughs> hey, let's talk about Predator. <laughs> you know, and then we review movies and stuff. So yeah, man. Anytime. Well, I love. I think we went. I think we went I'll over time, time, but it's it's so much oh, fun to talk good. to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so much fun to talk to you. I'd love to come back. I appreciate it, brother. Uh, that means a lot. Yeah. That means a lot. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you bet. You bet. Yeah. But don't go anywhere. But all you badasses watching, hey, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the old samurai guy. Follow the main. There, we're gonna, we gonna get it right. Uh -huh. We're gonna get it right. <laughs> there you go. Follow my man here on Instagram. The link is in the description box below. Follow him on his and the queen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Follow them on their filmmaking journey. More badassity is on the way. And uh, we're going to wrap it up for today. Uh, Brian, don't go anywhere, but I'll see you guys tomorrow. We got more movie discussions and spoilers with special guests with, the, with your boy Sam right here. Before we wrap it up, Brian, uh -huh. say the line, baby. Say the line. Lights out, motherfucker. Yeah. All right, guys. Take care. Peace out. Bye-bye. <laughs>